All right, guys, welcome back to the channel with a new video today that's going to be a food delivery app. I know it's unusual for you to uh, to see me full screen at the beginning of the video, but I wanted to take uh, just a few minutes to uh, thank you guys again uh, for all the support that you gave me. And I've actually uh, have a little surprise. I've been working a bit on uh, um, a creation of a community center. And the idea was actually given by one of you, Flavio, if you watch the video, thank you, man. Um, and school is actually a website that I didn't know about where you can create communities for free. Um, and that's exactly what I've created for us. Uh, the community is called Roman Flutter Squad, and you will find the link uh, in the description below if you want to join. Uh, it's pretty awesome. I'm going to show you exactly how it works. But uh, I think it's going to be an amazing place for us to be able to gather around and to uh, help each other uh, inside our, uh, our development journey and our uh, entrepreneur journey. So uh, I'm going to show you and you'll see a little transition. Oh, my God. Coming professional. So that's the, uh, that's the website I was talking about, school.com. Uh, like here, like you can see, and this is the community. So you have different tabs inside the community. So you have the community tab, uh, the classroom, calendar, members, leaderboard uh, tab. And uh, so basically here in the community, it's where we can all write posts, right? So you, uh, ha you are doing a project, you need some help, or you want to keep the community updated about what you're doing. I'll be posting myself a lot on there so we can interact with each other, pretty awesome. Then you have a classroom uh, space where you'd see here, uh, I've, I'll add the weather app and I, I will add the, the, the tutorials that we've done here on the YouTube channel, but I'll slice them up in way shorter videos. So you also have them uh, here. Um, we have a calendar tab where I've set up here, it's for now 8 a.m. on Monday, um, a weekly coffee. Uh, so we can gather all, all, all together, or at least the people that are available and have a little chat of um, how our week is going to go and all that. So that's pretty cool. It's going to move around, I think, with the hours, but you get the idea. And uh, yeah, then you can see the members and the leaderboards, because as you go through uh, the classrooms, the, the different courses, you get some more points. And I'll set up, I will set up everything here. But yeah, I welcome you to join uh, the community, the uh, Roman Flutter Squad here on school. It's completely for free. So uh, just create an account and hop on. Uh, I think we can really help each other there and that can really bring a lot of value for, uh, for everyone. So with that said, again, link in the description. With that said, uh, today we are going to create um, a food delivery app. So uh, I have the code right here. But yeah, basically, I found this little design on Dribble again. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. I think we can base ourselves on that in order to create something that, um, that can make sense. Uh, so we're going to deliver pizza today. So it's cool. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so I basically th this design is going to be like an inspiration. We're not going to create like text or what's there, uh, but I want to make it dynamic. So we are going to use Firebase. So we are going to use Firebase authentication to create an account and to uh, log into the app. We are going to use block all throughout the app in, uh, as the state management, uh, system. So connecting Firebase using block and all this. Uh, then we are going to create some um, some uh, documents inside our database for the different pizzas. So I have the classes ready. I think most of them. I I know what we're gonna what we're gonna add there, and we are also gonna add some sort of a card that we a card that we can't see here, uh, but we'll add that definitely. And I'll show you how, perhaps how you can do that in uh, in Firebase as well. Uh, this this little system. And, uh, and we're not going to follow through with the payments. That's something I keep for, uh, for later videos because it's a little bit more complex using Stripe and all this. But I think we're going to have a pretty good uh, sized app by the end of the tutorial using Flutter, using Firebase, clean architecture, well separation between the front and the back end code. Um, and yeah, so I think without further ado, uh, we shall get started, right? So as you saw uh, at the beginning, I have already created the Flutter project right there. So the Flutter project is running here on the left side of the screen. And it's basically a blank uh, Flutter project for now. 
Um, and yeah, let's get started, I think. So uh, the first thing that we will do is create all the files and folders that we're gonna have, uh, that we're gonna need for the app. Uh, so first thing first, in the main.dart file, we are gonna delete what they, uh, what they gave us, what Flutter gave us, and we are going to, um, and we're gonna create some files. So that's uh, broken, but don't worry about it. So by now, if you followed through the channel already, you know how I work. Uh, creating a file that's called app.dart, uh, creating another file that we're gonna call appview.dart, uh, and uh, another folder here that we're gonna call screens. That was not a folder that I've created, my bad. Here, new folder, screens, right, exactly like this. Uh, and we will need another folder at the very top that we will call blocks, uh, and perhaps as well a component uh, folder. So basically what I am doing here is creating the architecture of our um, of our project, all right? So you have here the main.dart file, which is the entry point. So that's gonna be where the app runs itself, okay? With the main function right there. Then the main.dart uh, file will redirect to the app file, okay? In this app file, we'll call uh, all of our like repository that we want throughout the entire process of the app, right? So the authentication block for now, because we don't have any other really stuff that we're, that, that's gonna be happening in this particular app. But you can imagine having, for example, like a, a message notification block that you could also add inside this app.dar file. Um, this app file is going to redirect to the app view file. And this app view file is gonna contain the material app right there. So with the colors and the block builder, the authentication block uh, builder, uh, in order to redirect the user either to the authentication screen or to the uh, to the app itself. So that's for uh, those three files. The block folder right here is for the um, is for the top level blocks. So for now, for us, it's going to be, for example, the authentication block. It's going to be here uh, because like it's top level, so we don't need it down the tree. So we can just put it up there. And we have then the uh, components. It's like for common widget, right? So if we have like, I don't know, a button that's, that's coming over and over again inside our app, instead of having to code it uh, 10 times the same throughout the app, we just create a button and we put it here inside the component as a file. And we can call this custom widget in our different files in order to have less code repetition throughout the app. Let's see if we are going to use that in this video. I, I'll try to use it once at least. Um, under the screens uh, folder, it's where, well, your actual app is, right? So uh, it's always like, for example, I can create folder now. I know that we are going to have a authentication system. So I'm going to create a folder that's called auth uh, for authentication. I'm going to create another folder that I will call home. Uh, and uh, I think if I get the design again, uh yeah i think that's pretty much it perhaps we'll have another one but we can just rock with that for now and under those under those different folders what i'm going to do all the time is having another folder that's called blocks all right and another folder that's going to be called views okay so that's that's how it works right we have the screens folder and for the authentication screen okay i have two uh sub subfolders which are the blocks and the views okay and inside the blocks uh, folder i'm going to have all the blocks that are related to the authentication system so for example sign in block sign up block they will be here and it makes sense for us in order to understand how our code is working later on when the project is big because if you have all of your blocks within the same folder it's going to become a nightmare for you to understand what's doing what and once it, when you have it separated like this, it's way easier uh, to be able to just understand and, and remodify your code and just read your code. So we are going to do the same under the home folder. So we're going to have blocks and we are going to have views. OK, so for now, that's that for uh, the lib folder. OK, so I'm going to collapse it all. Uh, we can delete that, but we don't care. So we have the lib folder that's pretty much done in terms of uh, of architecture we need the files now but we are going to come to that later 
we are going to create on the root uh, level of our application a new folder that we'll call packages, okay? And under this uh, packages uh, folder, we're going to create another folder that we're going to call user repository. So you've seen me doing that already in other projects, right? And those folders, they are for the backend code, right? So that normally you want to have an API that's handling all the thing and you don't want any kind of uh, backend operation happening on the client, but like here we are going to just make it simple and if you do that that's already very fine right um and the cool thing about that is even if you want to continue using uh, flutter and all this for your backend uh, if you're using github you can push those repository independently inside github and you can be working there uh specifically on the uh, on the repository that you want and that's pretty cool because it's very well separated from your uh, app itself and um, and yeah makes it way easier if you're working with a team and all this so we have a user repository and um, the other repository that we'll have I think it's going to well let's call that pizza repository uh, okay pizza repository uh, yeah that's good <laughs> okay so we have our two repositories right here. Okay, perfect. And within the repository, we're gonna create a pubspec.yaml file for each, okay? Uh, for each one, pubspec.yaml file. And that's that's cool because that means that we perhaps will use packages uh, within those repositories that we do not need inside our UI, right? I'm thinking right now about, uh, let's say, Firebase, Firestore, which is the database that we will use. We will need it in both our packages right there. So we will need to import this package here and here, but inside our root perspective.yaml file, we don't need to import it because we are just not using it inside the, the um, yeah, inside the app. So that's, that's an example, perhaps we will use it, huh? but you get my point. It's like, you can be very specific and track down every packages that you're using and see the application that you're having for those specific packages as well. So um, so we have that, that's pretty cool. Now we need to populate those, um, those perspect.yaml file. So what you wanna do here is copy something like this. So you will have, I'm gonna close that so you see more. Yeah, you see good. Uh, user repository as the name of the package, okay? The repo that handles users. Uh, we don't want to publish it to, to uh, the pub.dev, so we'll just leave it at that. The version, right, is that, the environment. And uh, here we have a few packages. Uh, perhaps I'm going to comment those for now, but uh, those packages are the one that we will use later on. And I'm going to save that file. That's going to do a pub get, okay, a command pub get. And you've seen that some files and folders have been created, which is totally normal. And under the user repository, I'm going to create now a new folder that I will call lib. You see, I'm retaking basically the same architecture that Flutter already gives us. And uh, and that's just to keep it every, everything consistent. Um, and yeah, so I'm just now going to copy uh, the inside of the user repository uh, perspective.yaml file and I'm gonna paste it inside the pizza repository, but here I'm gonna modify the name, right? It's not user repository, it's uh, it's pizza repository, a repository that, handle, that handles pizzas, which is a dream actually, right? <laughs> so uh, save that file that will create other uh, stuff inside the pizza repository as you see right here, and uh, same as the other one, creating a lib folder under it as well. So that's cool, okay. Can collapse a bit everything. Gonna save that and close that. And if we look at our packages, pizza repository is pretty cool and user repository is pretty cool as well. So now we will need to create, so the order of what we are going to do. So first we're gonna deal with uh, the authentication mechanism, right? Because we need users in order to be able to get within the app. And I don't wanna build a system that we will go back to uh, later on the video because we implement the authentication so i'd rather start with the authentication and the user system for uh, doing all that and then move on to the app right so uh, that's the first thing that we'll focus on the getting inside the app all right 
and as a user, so creating an account and everything. Once that's done, we'll move on to, I guess, uh, first we'll pr probably define the user model for the pizzas. So as you can see here in the design, uh, it's pretty straightforward. A, a user model, I mean, a, a pizza model here, uh, a data model in general, it's um, if you're working with designers and everything, like you will add some stuff for the technical aspect, but most of your class is already going to be defined through the graphic itself here. We have a pizza, so we have uh, a picture, we have uh, if it's uh, veg veggie or not, if it's spicy, not so much spicy or, uh, or, uh, or uh, very spicy. Uh, yes, exactly that. A name, a description, you have a price and you have a discount on this price, I guess, something like this. Um, and yeah, and you can see in the details, you have some macros as well for the pizza. So you see, it's, it's, it's pretty much already defined throughout the design. I've added some other few things for the cart and everything, but basically that's gonna be, that's gonna be that. And for our user, the data model is gonna be pretty much straightforward. I think we're gonna have, well, we have an ID, an email and a name, and uh, another few fields for uh, the technical aspect of the cart and everything, but otherwise that's pretty much that. So let's focus first on creating the user repository then, shall we? So that's what we're gonna do now. So I'm gonna collapse pizza repository and uh, I'm gonna move a bit fast on this because we've already covered that thing in videos, in full on videos, onto the architecture and all this. So if I'm going a bit fast, perhaps play the video a bit in slow motion and everything, but uh, otherwise go see other videos I've made on the, top, the topic and, uh, and you'll understand. So under the lib folder, I'm within the user repository, right? So user repository, lib folder, and then under that, I'm gonna be creating a, f yeah, a folder that's called source and uh, I'm gonna create a new file that I'm going to call user repository dot dart. Right, so under the source, I'm gonna create all the files and then we're gonna populate them, okay? So under the source uh, folder, I'm gonna create a few things. I'm gonna create a first a file that I'm gonna call user repo dot dart. I'm gonna create um, another file that I'm gonna call firebase user repo dot dart. And then I'm gonna create two folders, one folder that I'm gonna call entities and another folder that I'm gonna call models, okay? So let me explain fast what's happening here. So we'll have here our user repository file. That's basically the library that we will export uh, within our UI, within, within our main code. So here, library user repository. Up oh, user repository. Sorry. Okay. And within this user repository, we will export a few different files, right? So we'll come back to that at the end, but we'll export a few different files. Then we have the user repo.dart file. Here, this file, it's going to be an abstract class that we'll call user repository. And that's basically the class that we will call within our app, okay? So each method that we will be adding here are the methods that we'll call inside our block pattern within our app, okay? We're not gonna call directly uh, the method themselves, adds a layer of, of, of security as well of clarity within your code because you have a place where, right, you have all the methods that are defined with what you should uh, return for every single one of them. And uh, for example, here on our um, on our um, user repository, we'll have those methods, right? We'll have a string of my user, okay? Don't worry, my user is a class that we will create, okay? That's for checking the authentication of our user. Then we'll have the sign up class, the sign up uh, method, sorry, uh, which returns a future of type my user, okay? And takes two parameters within uh, the uh, methods, uh, my user, as well as a password. Um, a set user data, which takes a my user and returns nothing, uh, but it's still a future. And you have, you see, you see all of those methods. We are gonna implement that right now. Don't worry about that. But the, 
the, the point is you don't implement those methods within the abstract class. You implement those methods with, within the Firebase user uh, repo uh, class, okay, that we will create right now. So class, Firebase user repo, uh, repo, and that's going to implement user repository that we just created, okay? See, it imported the user repository that we've just created, okay? And uh, it takes a, it takes a few parameters for us in order to be uh, able to work as we want. We'll take a Firebase auth um, parameter and we'll create a user collection uh, parameter as well, which is going to be a reference to our users uh, collection within our app. So you have a few errors right now. So probably you guessed why for those two, because we need to import those packages, right? So let's go within the pospec.yaml file. And here we're going to just say that we want Firebase Auth and Cloud Firestore for now, for this specific, um, uh, for this specific repository here. So as you can see here now, if I want to import Firebase Auth, I can. And if I want to Im import a uh, cloud fire store, I can as well. Um, yeah, so that's, that's that. And then we need a constructor for our, uh, Firebase oath right here. So Firebase, uh, Firebase user repo. So that, and we are going to say that if Firebase, we're going to take a parameter of type Firebase oath, right? And if this parameter is null, so that's what I'm writing here, Firebase Auth, so our Firebase Auth is equal to Firebase Auth. And if there is nothing provided, we're just going to say Firebase Auth dot instance. All right. Um, I think that's that. Yeah, it's not an equal here. It's a, a, it's a column and here yes it's that okay perfect so we can save that and uh and i think we'll be good uh well that's just a an, an error right there because it's here okay um we're gonna use that in just a few seconds you can see our firebase user repo is having an error right there uh, and that's just because it implements the user repository uh, class, abstract class, and within this class, we have a few methods that we didn't implement, and he's not happy about that. So if I just say here, create the five missing overrides, and I press enter, you see that he created those methods with the right uh, parameter, like the right types every time, and the right parameters for each method. And uh, now the Firebase user repository has no error anymore, and I can just save that and be happy about it and implement those methods later, later on. We'll implement the method just in a few minutes. And here we have still some errors because we didn't create our uh, my user class, okay? Stuff that we'll do just now. So within our models uh, folder, we are creating two files, one that's called models.dart and one that's called my user, uh, that's called user.dart. Okay, so the models that Dart is basically going to be the export for the user that Dart, and I want every time I will use the my user class to to import within the files the models instead of the file directly. I mean, it's it's easier to do stuff like this in terms of comprehension, uh, right? So, my user. And why my user and not just user? Important stuff. If you're working with Firebase authentication, you must know that the class that it provides is a user class called, called like this, right? You see, user from Firebase authentication. And the problem is that if you're calling your custom user class the same as the Firebase authentication, you better make sure in your import you're not mixing up stuff, otherwise it's just not gonna work. And I've been stuck a long time before understanding that this was happening. So now my user class, they are always called my user and never user uh, anymore. And I recommend you do custom stuff as well 
uh, otherwise you can mix yourself up very easily. So the my user class. So what uh, what my user class is going to look like? So we're gonna have a string that we're gonna say user ID. We're gonna have a string that's gonna be email. Another string that's gonna be name. And I think that's pretty much it for uh, our uh, my user class. Except uh, I've written down some stuff. Um, yes. So. Uh, and I add a boolean has active uh, card. So that's for later, okay? Don't ask me why we put that. Uh, uh, you will understand later on once we are uh, way deeper within the app building. But for now, trust me, we'll need that later on. So let's create the class itself, right? So my user uh, constructor. So we're gonna require require my god i don't know how to write anymore this dot user id required this dot email i've missed a field actually uh i'll add that in a few seconds dot uh, name okay so here i mean i missed the field yes and no you can say uh, that you could um have a string that will be your password here within your user class right and i mean that would be to totally fine the only thing that you will th that you won't and you shouldn't do ever is to send that thing to firebase without any sort of any encryption and stuff but even with that i don't recommend doing it at all because you're handling authentication with firebase authentication with wh who already which already has this encryption built in so you would just add a breaking point within your uh, security within your app. So I would not recommend doing that. Um, what you can do here is just exclude it from going to Firebase, which is fine. Um, but I found that having a user class that's really close, as close as possible, if possible to be the same uh, from what I have from uh, the, um, the Firebase, from the Cloud Firestore is better for my understanding of uh, of how the app works so i'll just leave it outside uh, if you want to include it inside that's fine um we are going to create a few methods so i can perhaps just copy that because otherwise that's going to be very long to just write it down so i can just delete all of those things that's from our uh, tinder uh, youtube youtube uh, project that we did a couple uh, a couple of days ago uh, so it has active card and for for the empty methods i'm going to just say false um then uh, we are going to create uh, three other methods so my user entity method so one one that's called that's going to return to my user entity and that's going to be called to entity and that's going to take uh, nothing but it's going to return a my user entity that we didn't create it yet so don't worry okay we're just going to create that in just a few seconds and uh, as parameters uh, basically it's the one that we have within our my user class except uh, except nothing it's really just the same uh, and the reason why I uh, don't put those methods within the my user class straight up uh, I could to be, to be fair, I really could. It's really more for comprehension is I have my user class and I have my user entity class, which are working together, uh, but my user class is comprehensive within my app and my user entity is only dealing with sending classes, like transforming classes that are coming from the app to map that will go to uh, JSON map, okay, that will go to the uh, database and transforming JSON maps from the database in classes to go inside my app. And that's basically what the entity uh, is doing. And I think it's better in terms of comprehension to have it separated. Again, if you want to have it in the same place to reduce complexity, feel free to customize it as you wish. But, um, but I, I recommend having this separation it might it might sound a little bit heavy at first i understand but um 
once you get the hang of it and uh, and understand really how it works and build uh, some um, like some models that you can just copy and paste once you create your app because here I'm with you but every time I'm creating a new app uh, I have templates already uh, made so I don't have to rewrite everything by hand uh, at least for having the uh, authentication system done and all that so it's pretty straightforward once you know how to do it so while I was talking I've created the from entity method so the two entity method, it's going to take uh, my user object and transform it within into uh, my user entity object. That's then going to transform it into a JSON map that's going to the database. And the from entity method, well, it's uh, having in entry a JSON map from the database. Then it's transforming the JSON map within uh, uh, my user entity object. And the my user entity object transforms itself into a my user object that we can use within our app. Makes sense, right? So uh, here, the only thing that I need to add then is the entity word in front of everything. Oh, yeah, just like that. Okay, perfect. And perhaps I want a two string method. Yeah, let's add a two string method. Return, um, return uh, my user. Up, and I'm gonna just say user ID, email, name, and has active cards. All right, we can save that up. And now we're gonna create the my user entity class, okay? So uh, same model that we could, uh, that we've done here instead under the entities folder, but instead of calling it the file models, we're gonna call it entities entity entities dot dart all right and we're going to export we'll see what we'll export because we're going to create a new file that we will call user wow user entity dot dart okay and within the entities dot dart file we're going to export user underscore entity save that up uh here oh wow yeah, I did fuck that up, didn't I? <laughs> so uh, you probably told me that already in the comments. I've created the uh, my user class within the model uh, dot dart file. It's not right. So I just copy and paste it again within the user dot dart file. That's better. Uh, let me close all of that. So we have the user dot dart, which has the my user class within it the models.dart, which exports the user.dart, that's for the models. And we have within the entities folder, the user entity that we'll create right now and the entities.dart that export. Okay, fine, sorry, my bad. Let's create the user entity now. So basically the user entity is gonna be just a gigantic copy of what we already have, uh, except uh, we're gonna implement those two methods, right? So uh, my user entity, takes the same parameter as the one that we have in our uh, my user class um, and that's that um, and now we're just going to create the to document method and the from document method so the to document method basically it's a map right uh, string object string object like this to document to document, to JSON, it's the same. You write it as you want to write it. And that's gonna return then a map, obviously, right? And a map of the fields that we have, okay? So a map that uh, we're gonna call user ID, and that's gonna be the string that we have. Email, same, that's gonna be email, uh, name, okay? And has active card up up i don't know if it's the right english word if it's cart or card i have no idea uh we'll call it cart if it's not the right name i am sorry um so that's that okay so that's the two document method straightforward and the reason we do that uh, because we cannot send um objects like we can't ju just send my user object to the firebase uh, cloud firestore and for instance any kind of database ever you need to send some sort of like formalized type of data and this map basically is, is like a json uh, file 
And that's a comprehensible thing that uh, the database will understand because those fields are strings and a Boolean, for example, right? Uh, the database understand a, a list, understand a map, understand a string, a number, but the database then does not understand an object of your custom class, right? So you need to break your class down into these sort of things in order to put it somewhere, right? And that's all the time the work that, we, that you will do. You will use your class that you have within your app, transform it to go to the database, and then transform what you have in the database within your class in order to be able to use it within your app. That's, that's the mechanism that you have all the time going on. Uh, so we have the two document method, and now we have the uh, my user entity, sorry, uh, from document. From document, from JSON, it's really doesn't matter. It's the same. So string object, same stuff. String dynamic, uh, document doc, and here we're gonna return a my user entity. Oh, sorry, my user entity. Okay. Up. Oh wow. Up. Okay, and here we are not going to say uh, user ID, but we are going to access the parameter within the map that's called user ID, right? And to do that, you just write it like this. So that's going to access the parameter of our map that's called user ID. Basically, we receive a map like this, okay, from, uh, from uh, the database, okay? And it's called doc, and we are accessing the user ID parameter within this map that's going to give us that, and we can affect that to this because it's the same type okay and i've imported something without wanting to do that uh, and i'm just going to add that to the three others Oop. kind of a bit fucked that up but it's okay okay good so uh we are ready that's the my user entity done uh, now we can import the my user entity within our um, user.dart file. And here I'm going to import entities. Okay. Uh, so that's that. Can save that. And I can import within our user repo. Now we created the my user. Okay. So I can import models right there. Okay. And can just save that. So that's pretty cool. Um, and here we can see some uh, problems. Why is that? Uh, Ah, yeah, because we imported some stuff within, yes, okay. So one way to fix that thing is to delete that and recreate those overrides. Yes, perfect. Okay, so now we have created the entities. So that, that's gonna be cool. We have, creating the mo we have created the model, so our user, cool. And now we have the methods that we will implement right now. Uh, we have our user repository abstract class and here, yes, here we can export the different file that we've created, okay? So we want to export source uh, slash entities slash entities.dart. We want to export source slash models models.dart. We want to export as well uh, source slash user repo.dart and... Um, and I think that's that. Perhaps we want to export uh, source slash uh, Firebase repo Dart, and can save that. I'm not sure we'll need that, but let's just ex export it. But yeah, okay. Can close that up. Can close everything actually. And uh, now we're going to implement uh, those methods, okay, within our Firebase user repository. Okay. I'm just going to take a five minute break, and I will be back with you guys in a few seconds. All right, let's back at it again. Uh, I hope you stretch your legs as well because it's what, 40 minutes into the video now. So if you've been there since the beginning, I recommend uh, stretching your, your legs uh, once in a while to be, uh, to be as efficient as possible. So now uh, we left off uh, implementing uh, the Firebase user repository uh, file. So that's just what we'll do right now. So I'm just gonna reorganize a little bit the methods I like to have uh, the getter at the very top. Then we'll have uh, 
the sign in sign up under that. Okay. Then log out and, you, and set your data. That's fine. Okay. So uh, let's start with uh, the stream. Okay. So this stream is basically going to change every time that the app detects that a new user has been connected, right? And so that's exactly what we want to uh, create right now. So a stream of my user. So how are we going to do that? So first thing first, we're going to delete that thing and replace it with curly break it, bracelet. So now we're going to return what? We're going to return our Firebase auth. Okay, right? So that's the instance that we have right here. Okay, uh, Firebase. And we're going to call the method auth uh, state changes, right? And from that, we're going to call a method that's called flat map. And flat map, you could use map, right? But here we want to use a flat map that's coming from uh, the rx dark package. So we'll need to import that as well. Okay. And the flat map is basically allowing us to play with our own my user object, right? And change the, the um, user object from Firebase authentication to our uh, my user object. So I'm just going to import erics.dart right there and uh, dot flat map. And uh, here we're going to take a Firebase, uh, let's call it Firebase user. Okay. Now we're going to say that this thing is asynchronous and we need to add the little star to it. I'm going to, okay, the little star to it. And uh, because we are returning a stream, right? And synchronous, basically, if you return just an async like this, it's going to be for a future, okay? And if you return an asynchronous with a little uh, star like this, it's going to be a stream and you're not going to return something, you're going to yield something. Uh, and so here, what we'll say is we'll say if um, the Firebase user, okay, this one, that's of type user, okay, uh, is equal to no, we're going to yield uh, my user dot empty, right? Else, we're going to yield, uh, we're going to yield, well, we're going to yield user collections, okay? So this collection, the reference of our user collection, dot document Firebase user dot UUID, okay? So we are accessing the document with the right, with the user ID that's connected, okay? And we are getting that one, okay? And once we get that one, we transform what we got. So the, 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 yeah, the map, the JSON map that we got from the database to a my user object. And to do that, we call my user dot from entity, okay? Within this method, we call my user entity dot from document. And here we are calling value dot data. Say that this can't be null. And uh, we need to await that thing. And that should be that should be good. I'm going to collapse a little bit that so you can see more. Perfect. OK, save that thing. And the stream is basically done. So we every time that uh, here notifies about changing to the user sign in state, such as sign in or sign out. So every time that a user sign in or sign out, right, well, or sign up uh, will be the stream will be notified because remember a stream is always open basically is when you open the faucet and the water flows and the water is going to continue flowing until you close the, the, the faucet right and that's exactly what happens here instead of a future whereas as a future is just opening and closing and, and closing straight up right so a stream is a constant flow of information that's changing over time and that's exactly what we have right now for our user so the uh, getter is done. So now let's create the sign in uh, method. So here, what I like to, to do all the time is um, wrap my uh, method inside um, uh, try catch. Okay. And uh, if something goes wrong, I'm rethrowing everything. So my block will catch it and send me a, a failure state to my app. So here, very straightforward, we're going to await Firebase Oath dot sign in with email and password because that's the one that we've decided to go for in this app. And uh, the email and password will be provided within the, um, the parameter of the function. And we don't forget to mark our method as async because it's a future and not with the uh, little star because it's a future, not a stream. Okay. 
So sign-in method just done, straightforward, nothing really to add to it. Uh, now let's create the sign-up method. So same thing, so I'm gonna copy the try-catch because I don't wanna rewrite it again. Uh, same stuff, I'm gonna put an async for, uh, stuff right there. And here, uh, instead of calling that, uh, I am gonna, oh, let's have delete that. And here I'm gonna say user credential, okay? So user is equal to uh, Firebase authentication dot create user with email and password. All right. So let me just drop that down so you can see everything. Uh, and here, basically, my uh, email is within my user, right? My user dot email. And as I said earlier, you could have your password within your class. So you would have just the my user parameter here instead of having the password. For me, it's just a bit more. Uh, clear and separated, but you can really do whatever you want there. And what I want to do here on sign up, I want to say that my user dot dot uh, user ID is equal to um, user dot user dot UID, exactly like that. And I will need to add that thing here. And I'm returning my user. All right, what I've done just here, so bear with me. So once the user is going to cl click on sign up, okay, what's going to happen? It's going to come here, okay? So Firebase Authentication is going to create a new uh, user with email and password, okay? And uh, then I want to set my um, user ID to the one that was given, provided by Firebase Authentication. And that's exactly what I am doing right there, okay? Uh, and then I'm returning my user because my user changed within our method because the ID now is the one that Firebase Authentication gave us. So I wanna be able to update my app uh, according to, to that, right? So that's exactly what we are doing right there. Um, the two last methods that we have, the logout method, I'm going to get it out of the way because that's really one line. <laughs> that's really a Firebase authentication dot sign out, really not complex at all. And the set user data, perhaps a little bit more complex, but really nothing complex at all. Um, we are going to embed that thing within the try catch. Just going to copy that because I'm a lazy guy. And here, what I want to do is basically just say await, okay? User collections, so the reference of the user collection that we've created above. Otherwise, it's just, it's really for me to gain time, okay? Because otherwise, every time that I am calling the user collection, I'd have to write that on all of that. Instead, I just have to write user collection. And if you have other type of collection, the pizza collection or whatever, you can just make a reference to it and uh, call that thing instead of having to call all of the stuff all of the time. So that's just going to be too heavy in the end. So uh, set user data. So we want to create a document within our Firebase uh, Firestore. So our database, our uh, user document. So here I'm just going to say uh, up user. Perhaps I'll call it my user so it's more clear for you. My user dot user ID. Okay. Dot document dot set. And here I want to convert my user object, okay, to uh, a map, as I said earlier. So to do that, I'm going to call it first to entity. So now it's a my user entity object. And now within the my user entity, I can call two document. And just like that, it's done. Easy, straight and easy. So for our Firebase user repository, that dart, we're done for now. So perhaps we'll add a, a few other stuff later on, but the, the big, big base is here. I don't know why I have all that, but okay. So we are going to leave that alone for now. And uh, we are going to go inside the lib folder and um, and create the logic in order for us to start, uh, yeah, to start uh, building our uh, authentication UI. And I'm going to ba base myself on stuff that we've already done because it makes no sense to recreate an entire and make a very detailed, uh, understandable uh, explanation of how the uh, login system works. I have videos dedicated to that, so you should check them out. So, um, all right, close that up and navigate to the lib folder now. So now let's play with uh, 
Let's play first with our prospected YAML file. We'll need a few stuff right there. So we'll need the Firebase core package first. Uh, so under dependencies, you're gonna need to import Firebase core. Um, we'll need to import as well those block packages. I don't know if they are are the right um, uh, the right uh, versions. Uh, but for now, we're just going to say that they are. Otherwise, you can just go to pub pub dev and take the latest version. That should not be a problem. And then I'm, imp I'm importing my uh, custom repository, my user repository that we've just created. I'm importing it as well right there. Uh, I'm saving all this, which is getting me a pub get. Um, there are newer version. You have a newer version with the dependency constraint. All right. So... Uh, okay, let's see how that thing uh, ends up. Okay, that looks okay. So now inside our main.dart file here, so we're gonna call a few things. So the first thing that we'll call is widget flutterbinding.unsure initialized. So that makes sure everything is, in, is like initialized right okay uh, I'm gonna make my main uh, function asynchronous because here I'm gonna call await firebase dot initialized app okay and for now you're gonna say well, why are you initializing a firebase project we didn't create it anything yes okay I know but I will show you how to do that in just a few seconds and another file that we need is um, this file right there that I'm just gonna copy within the lib folder, simple block observer, okay? So this file is basically in the console, keep us updated on the state of the block, okay? It's mainly, it's only for development purposes that I have this file, okay? Uh, and uh, and for us to understand which state and which, uh, yeah, which state and which events are triggered uh, within our app. And I wanna call that thing within my main.dart file here, I want to say block uh, dot observer uh, is equal to, and perhaps I'm going to need to import a flutter block uh, is equal to a simple uh, observer block, simple block observer. Yes, that's the one. Okay. Uh, and here we still have an error because we're not calling main app here. So let's fix that. So let's navigate to the app.dart file. And here I'm going to create a stateless widget that I am going to call my app. Okay. And here in, within the main.dart file, I'm going to call my app. Okay. I can save that. And as you can see, the error went away. So now let's deal with the my app file. Okay. So what's happening? So What's happening here, I told you it was for the repository that was going to be accessible throughout your entire app. So here what I need is a parameter that's called user repository, right? And this parameter, I will just call it user repository and I will accept, I put it directly within the constructor of the stateless widget there. Uh, so now we have an error in the main.dart file because we need to provide uh, this user repository. And we can't just say user repository like this, right? Because uh, this is an abstract class and abstract class, they can't be instantiated, right? But what we can do is say Firebase uh, user repo, okay? And that will work if we put the constant away. Here I say user repository, see? Abstract class cannot be instantiated. And that's a basic principle, but the Firebase user repository implements the abstract class and can be instantiated. So I'm creating the instance of this class right there. And then by having it uh, available here and within my um, uh, authentication block as a public parameter, I don't have to recreate a class, uh, an, an object of this class every time I need something from the user repository. I can simply use that. And that's very cool in terms of performance gain, because if you create a hundred instance of a class to do one thing, that's just not optimized, right? But that optimization is for later on down the road. Uh, if you uh, really get serious about uh, building apps for a larger public. Now here, what we want to do is return a repository provider. 
a repository provider like this, all right, and uh, of type authentication block. So for now, it's just going to be an error, right? Because we didn't created our, our uh, authentication block, but we're going to create that right now, authentication block. Um, and so create, so that takes a context, okay? And um, oh, just like that. And that's going to be authentication block, authentication block. And the authentication block, if I can tell you right now, is going to take a user repository parameter that's going to be equal to user repository, okay? And uh, as a child parameter of this thing, we're going to have my app view, all right? And uh, we have a few errors. Authentication block, not created. My app view, not created. So we can just create the authentication block first. So the authentication block, we are going to create it within the blocks here, uh, just under the lib folder, right? Because it's the top level block that we want to be accessible throughout the entire app, okay? So how would you do that thing? So I'm doing there, I just right click on it and uh, I don't have the... I don't have the extension installed on this Mac, so perhaps we can do that together. Oh, I thought I had. Why in create block? No, it does not uh, allow me. Perhaps it's another one. Flutter block. Let's see. Block. Normally I have it. Uh, normally this thing can create a new block for you. Uh, if I disable it and enable it, <clears throat> let's see yeah so now with this extension here i have block new block on new cubic so i'm going to create a block all right and the name of this block is going to be authentication underscore block and you see it just created the uh the block for us so that's pretty cool um yes okay uh, i'm just going to rename it authentication block right there so we know what's going on you can close that perhaps extend that a little bit so you see more and um and i can just do that right now because we don't need the uh, app yet so let's create our authentication block right so i can just import that thing right now but uh, not yet i authentication block block i am uh, what what did i do again okay <laughs> let's try that thing again all right authentication and it's just gonna give it to me like this yeah okay <laughs> so now i think i can import that thing yeah blocks blocks all right and here i am just gonna rename it authentication block all right up import that thing again save okay good um little sip of coffee needed now we have that uh, authentication events block and state so let's start with the first one which is the event so you see that the package the extension that we have created the some stuff for us already so that's pretty cool we're going to leave that but now we are going to create our custom event right because this is a sealed class so that's just what we are all gonna all of our uh, events are going to extend the authentication event all right so now we create a class that we're going to call authentication user changes user changed and that's going to extend authentication event all right that takes a parameter that's going to be a my user okay and we're going to call it uh, we're going to call it user right and uh, that's going to be constant for the uh, constructor authentication user change and that's going to be this.myUser. All right. And perhaps we can just implement that as well within our class because we have a parameter. So that's pretty much it for the event. Authentication user change. And that's that. Okay. So now let's create the state. So the state here, you see that the package, it created some sort of a class for us. And you can basically create a block two different ways. This way, where every time that you want a new state, you're going to create a new class, right? And uh, you're going to call, call that class within the block, and that's fine. But you have another way to do it. And for the authentication block, uh, I prefer the second one. 
So here I'm deleting everything and now authentication uh, status, all right, it's, it's an enumeration. And here I have authenticated, so the user can be authenticated. Uh, the user can be unauthenticated and the status can be a no. All right, so that's the, that's the state that the user can be in, all right? So now I'm gonna create my class. So the class, I'm gonna call it authentication state. That doesn't move, all right? And that's still gonna extend the quotable, which is the package that comes with Flutter uh, block, which allows you to compare objects. So the constructor of this thing is gonna be authentication state, all right? Up, underscore, if I can make that happen, up la. So that's just semantic right here, huh? up. And here we're gonna eat, we're gonna in instantiate a few parameters that we have uh, within our class, which is final authentication status, all right? So we can just call that status, and final uh, my user, okay? That we can just call user. And I can as well uh, instantiate the props parameter because it's needed since we extend the quotable. All right. Uh, so that's that, status and user. Uh, so inside our um, our constructor, uh, we wanna say that this dot status is equal to authentication status dot unknown at first, all right? And that our user, no, this dot user is equal to just that, okay? To what we are gonna give it. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Up, oh, I need that. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Perfect. Um, so now I'm going to implement a few methods. So we are going to say constant authentication state dot unknown. And that's basically going to just return itself. It's just going to return the contain the uh, the constructor itself and do nothing. Uh, then uh, that's authentication state dot uh, authenticated, all right? And so that's going to take a my user object, all right? Follow with me. And what is going to give us this up calling the constructor and the status now is authentication status, authentication status dot authenticated. All right, that's that and the user is equal to here perhaps we can call it my user so it's a bit more clear to my user all right so that's that and the last one that i want to create is going to be authentication state dot uh, unauthenticated all right and basically that takes nothing and that returns sorry up and that returns the constructor that we have uh with the status of um authentication oh, authentication status uh dot unauthenticated and uh, i am not gonna add a user since we don't have one and that's it for uh the state okay so that's how i like to create the authentication uh state for the block site uh in an app so now we're gonna deal with the block itself Okay, so we've created the event, the state, and now we're going to create the block. So you see here, we have a few things already created, but we need some more stuff. So we need a parameter of the block, of the block that we are going to call user repository. Okay, so that's going to be a user repository stuff. And uh, we need uh, um, a stream subscription that we're going to initialize within the constructor. So we're going to call late first, because otherwise it's going to tell us, well, right, you didn't instantiate it. So... Please instantiate that thing, but with the late keyword, you don't need that. So we need a stream subscription of type my user. Remember the getter that we've created within our package here, our user repository package. Well, uh, it was a it was a stream of my user, and now I want to subscribe to that to that specific stream, right? Of type my user. Okay, and I'm just gonna call that user um, subscription subscription like this. Okay. So now a few things. So a few things inside our authentication block. First, I'm gonna say that the user repository, sorry, that this the user repository is required. 
I don't want to make this private because I want to be able to access the user repository parameter of the authentication block throughout the entire app, as I told you earlier, in order to not create a thousand instances of the of the same class. Um, so that's that for the for the block. And then what I want to do is say uh, that the um, no, it's not user subscription. Sorry, it's the user repository right there. And then uh, here, I can delete that, super, um, and then authentication state, since we change a little bit everything. And the first stage is that we have is unknown, okay? And we can make that a constant. Um, so then a few things. Here, um, I'm gonna say that the user subscription, okay, is equal to user repository dot uh, user. Okay, the one that we've created, the stream of my user, all right? And then I'm gonna listen to that stream, okay? And here you see that it created a method because the listen, that's what it does, all right? Well, I'm not gonna read it, but adds a subscription to a stream. That's what we want here. Perhaps I can call that thing user, okay? And then what I want to do within it, so what I want to do within it is add, so the keyword add is gonna add a new event, okay? And the new is authentication user change, and I'm gonna just give it the new user that we have, okay? And um, oh, yep, just like that. And um, yep because I forgot in the event that this needs to be like this. And so perhaps we can delete that thing. Okay, good. So now we have our uh, user subscription that is um, that is uh, being uh, instantiated here. Okay, so that's cool. And now we can create our uh, authentication user change. So it's right. Oopla, my God. Sorry, almost broke everything. <laughs> so uh, on um, authentication uh, user change, what we'll do is say here, if event.user is different than my user dot empty, then I want to emit authentication state dot authenticated, all right? And the user is going to be event.myUser, all right? And I just need to make that so that it's here. If that's not the case, I want to emit authentication state dot unauthenticated. I can make that a constant and save that thing. And that's it. I'm perhaps just going to add the close uh, parameter of um, the block so we can close the user subscription when it's done and that's it so remember what we've created within our package here user repository lib source firebase uh, user repository here if the user that we get from authentication is null then we return we yell uh, my user dot empty if not we return a, a populated object okay and that's pretty much what we have right here if the user that we have within our event, so that's coming from here, huh? okay, is empty, then we have that. If it's not empty, then we have that. And that's gonna change the behavior that we have within the app. And since it's the stream, it's gonna be updating the app in real time without having to do anything really. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so the whole block is done. So we can close the block now. Okay, we're back to the app.dart file, okay? And uh, here, uh, app view, now it's the app view time, isn't it? So let's create the app view file, uh, app view file itself. So that's gonna be a stateless widget that I'm gonna call my app view. And so here we are returning a material app. Hopla, that's what we're doing. So we're gonna give it a title, uh, pizza, um, uh, pizza delivery, pizza delivery, um, and yeah. So that's that. 
I'm going to save that in the app here dot dart. I'm just going to import app view and can make that a constant. And if I refresh my app, uh, yeah, I, I for sure, uh, yeah, I didn't initialize the Firebase. That's the, that's the next thing we're going to do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I understand that you're pissed. Don't worry about it. So we're going to do it now because it's really pissed. So I think I've prepared it. Yeah. So you're going to navigate to Firebase console.firebase.google.com, right? And you set up an account if you don't have one, and then you're gonna create a new project. So here, I'm gonna say pizza delivery, and I'm gonna create that project. I don't need Google Analytics for this project because it's simply a test project. If you want, you can enable it, but that's just, you don't have any users, so that's just not gonna make sense. Mm. I'll be back with you when uh, the project has built. All right, so the project has built. So now we're gonna click continue and it's gonna redirect us to uh, the console right there. So we need a few things. So we're gonna create an iOS um, project there. Uh, and so we need a bundle ID. So how do you find your bundle ID? You find your bundle ID by navigating to your project under iOS runner and I think it's here Otherwise, um, I'm going to show you where it is. I, I think you have to open. Uh, yeah, you probably have to open Xcode or there is probably a way, but yeah. Oops, sorry. That was not the right comment that I was looking for. So within your uh, terminal here, you're going to type open iOS runner dot XCW workspace press enter and that's going to open an, um, an Xcode window and uh, let me see if there is the Xcode window somewhere. Yes, it's here. Let me show it to you. Okay. And here and you click on runner on the left and you'd see here you have your bundle identifier. So by default, it's going to be something like com.example.pizzaapp but, but you can make everything that you want here really it needs to be unique. That's the only, that's the only point. So I'm going to navigate back to Firebase, put the, put that here. I'm going to call pizza app as the name. I'm going to register my app. So the app is going to be registered right now. I'm going to download Google services, uh, info dot please that will, that I will need to add to my project and you can just pass on to the other stuff we don't care and to complete the um, to complete the uh, the installation what we need to do is to uh, add the Google service to uh, the project and so how you doing that so you will need to open your download uh, folder so I have my download folder right there and here you see the Google service uh, dash info dot list. And so I'm going to open a new, um, a new one up. And um, what I want to navigate to is the project itself. So development, not here for me, it's dev project, YouTube. Um, it's going to be pizza app, uh, iOS. And under iOS, I'm going to iOS runner. And I'm going to take the Google info dash list. And I'm just going to paste it right here uh, up like that. I can close my download folder and uh, I have it right here. Okay. Uh, perhaps as a safety, you might want to add as well. You see it's here now. You might want to add it as well to uh, Xcode directly because you see it didn't, it didn't update it there. So perhaps you want to do just a drag and drop there and Xcode is going to tell you, are you sure you want to do that? You click on finish. And now you see that the Google service is here as well. So that's for, uh, that's for iOS and basically for iOS, that's all you need to do. Now it's uh, it's up and running. So if I go back on uh, Firestore, uh, Firebase, sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna enable authentication. So I'm gonna say email and password just like that. Save, and I'm gonna enable Firestore database. Okay, create a database. Um, it's just taking a bit of time up. I'm not in the U S I'm more in the Euro in Europe. I'm going to do that in test mode. I'm going to create the database, right? 
So while this is creating, uh, I'm going to show you as well how to set that up on iOS. It's very straightforward as well. So don't worry about it. Um, up. Okay, so now we have uh, the Firestore uh, database that's uh, that's created as well. So that's pretty cool. And now perhaps we want to also enable, sorry, pizza delivery, add a new app and add an Android app. Okay. So what was our thing? I think com.example.pizza app, something like this. I think that was something like this. Uh, let me check. Where is my code? I'm lost. It's here. Okay. So now we're not on iOS anymore. We are um, we are not on iOS anymore, but that should be here. Yes, that's the bundle that we were looking for. Okay, so I can close that up. I'm sorry, guys, a bit too much stuff is happening on my screen. Okay, I had it right, I had it right. So pizza app Android, you don't need to put a name on, you really don't. I'm going to register the app and that's going to be the same process. We're going to have to uh, download yeah, a Google service.json file that we'll need to add to our project. Next, uh, we can just pass on that and that I will show you what to do. So now we have the file. So I'm going to navigate again to I can close that up, but to my um, download folder, right? And here I have a google-services.json file that happy that, that just there, right? So I'm going to take that file and I need to put it under Android app and I need to put it right here. OK, so that's just exactly what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to take the file up and I'm just going to drag and drop it here. OK, perfect. Uh, once this file is drag and dropped in the right place, so make sure you're under Android app and you put it right there, not under source or anything. You put it here. OK. So you might need to um, add a few different things to your project. So within the build.gradle, which is under the Android build.gradle, so the lower one, okay, you need to add a few things. So you need to add within the dependencies this line, uh, uh, dependencies up Google service, all right? Uh, here it's already there, and uh, we can just save that file, and that would be that. Under the other build.gradle that you have, so the one under the app uh, um, stuff, the app folder, you need as well to add within the plugins here the uh, Google services, okay? And uh, do you need to add something else? I think you do. Yep, you do. Within uh, the dependencies at the very bottom of it, here it's empty. You need to add this, okay? this line and I think that's that let me check my configurations uh, tick, 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 tick. yeah I think that's it okay I think one way to find out is to is to, to test that out all right so I'll need to close that up because we've made some modification and I'm going to rerun it again and we'll see if that works but that's it for the the configuration of uh, of Firebase so I'm going to put the design right there so we have it on hand and the Firebase is right here. So we have the authentication and the uh, Firestore, so our database. So we'll need that. Uh, we'll use as well Firebase storage, so I might as well, I might as well just start uh, the service up. It takes a few, few seconds to build up. I'm going to extend that a little bit and we'll see if everything works right. Um, okay, I'll be back with you when it's uh, when the app is built. Okay, perfect. So as you can see on the left, I know it's not very clear, but the app uh, built as expected and uh, the configuration of Firebase is good. And as you can see as well, the storage, um, the storage product is also enabled on our uh, project so that's pretty cool so we can now uh, start really building the app I know it's been uh, a long preparation almost well an hour and 20 minutes of preparation but uh, you know it's it's always how it is once you create an app from the beginning and you uh, 
you get to uh, un uh, to understand how all the block and all the stuff works. I mean, you could be way faster, uh, but you would lack uh, the um, the possibility later on to really understand your code and to uh, and to make a difference with it. So let's just create our uh, my app view. So I've just checked that off, and now. Yep, as you can see, there is that, but that's normal because we have no uh, home parameter for our um, for our uh, material app that we'll do right now. So if I look a little bit at the theme, so we have blue, which is the main primary color, right? So that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to create a quick theme, uh, theme data. Uh, within the theme data, I'm going to access color scheme and I'm going to say color scheme dot light. OK, and I'm going to say that the background color is going to be colors dot some sort of a gray. I think it's a gray shade 100 or something like this. I'm going to say that on background, uh, the colors is going to be black. Right. So that's what we have. Yeah, mainly um, mainly. Yes uh and that's the primary color it's gonna be colors dot blue i don't know if i like this blue yet we'll see later on uh and um yeah that's pretty much it uh, we're gonna say on primary for color and we're gonna say colors dot white and uh we'll add other stuff if we need later on right uh, i think we can just get away with that now uh yeah yeah okay so theme is done now we can access the home parameter and that's where it gets interesting because we've created the block uh, the authentication block so what we want to do here is say block builder just just checking that it was recording right so block builder okay so our block builder is of type uh, authentication block authentication state right and a builder works with a context as well as a state obviously uh, so what do we want to do we want to say if the state dot status right we access the status parameter of our authentication state is equal to authentication status dot authenticated right so that means that user is authenticated what I want to do is return um home screen for now okay we didn't create it yet but we will and if it's not the case all right i want to return i want to return uh the welcome screen that we didn't create it yet but we will don't worry <laughs> and i'm gonna save that thing um we have an error right there expected to find some stuff expecting to find that yes Ooh. Okay. All right. I can just save that. And now we are going to create those screens, right? So we're going to start to make this app look a little bit more like an app uh, than just what it, what it is right now. So uh, we're going to start with the authentication screen, right? But uh, we can go navigate to screens and first home views and here new file home screen dot dart okay and for now we're just going to create that file and say that it's a stateless widget that we just call home screen okay and for now we're just going to say that this is going to be a scaffold all right and we're just going to leave it at that that means inside our app view dot dart file we can import the home screen right so that's what i just did and we can make that a constant so that's that and now we're going to navigate to uh off so screen of views and here we're going to create a new file that we're going to call welcome screen dot dart and so this screen i'm going to base myself on what we did with the tinder app right uh, and basically i'm going to create the same uh, screen so it's going to be a stateful widget that we're going to call welcome screen and we can import that thing within the app view dot dart file i can save that and you can see here it's a placeholder and uh here is the right because is the right thing because we have a placeholder so 
uh, I'm going to retake the exact same uh, UI that we had on our uh, Tinder app. So I'm just going to take it and paste it. OK, uh, so a few things are not working because we didn't create them yet, but we will. Don't worry. I'm thinking about the signing block and the signing screen. OK, so basically what I have done here is creating a scaffold, but it's better if we just go through it uh, later on. OK, so it's just a tab view controller. Uh, where we have sign in or sign up okay so that's why we have a controller right here a scaffold and uh, then a stack for a little bit of uh, of, uh, of ui stuff uh, of color and then we have the sign in tab and the sign up the sign up tab okay and now here in the tab view we have the um, here we have the sign in block uh, and the sign in screen and here the sign up screen okay so we need to create those two files so i'm just going to take them from what we already created and just paste them right there okay before i'm showing them to you i want to create together the blocks okay so don't don't worry about those screens right right now okay we're going to get to them we're just going to create the blocks first so we need what here within the auth block we need a new block that we will call sign in. So that's going to be the sign in block. OK, I'm just going to rename that to make it sign in block. And we need another block that we will call sign up. That I'm going to rename as well sign up block. OK, so let's start with uh, doesn't really matter, but let's start with the sign in block. OK event block and state again you know with the package uh, we've managed to uh, the, the package created some stuff for us so the sign in event so we have here a new class that we're going to create that's going to be class sign in required and that's going to extend sign in event okay so with the sign in required we're going to need two parameters to string so first it's going to be the email and the second one is going to be the password okay and i'm going to create the constructor sign in required and i'm going to say this email and this dot password okay and i can as well overwrite that thing right here with email and password all right and we need another event that's uh, going to be um sign up required if we want to sign out that's sign out required okay extend signing event uh, and that's just that for the sign out you can just save that thing now we're going to do the state so remember i told you you can do different ways so now we're going to do it the the way that it provided uh, that it's provided for us so we're just going to create new class sign in uh so we can just copy that thing and duplicate it three times okay so we have sign in here we're gonna up up delete that thing so we have first sign in failure then we have sign in lo loading and sign in success and for the signing success perhaps we want to for the failure you would want to add perhaps a message and display the message to show you the right error that uh, occurred we can add that later on, but for now, let's just leave it at that. Uh, for the block here, what we will do is uh, add right here. We need final user repository object as well that we'll call user repository. I'm making that thing private so it's only used within the block. Um, I'm going to say that I require uh, I mean, you can use you can straight up just say that 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 will be fine. All right. Um, yeah, we can just say straight up that that's going to save us time. Um, so now we're going to implement a uh, sign in required. OK, the event that we've just created. So I'm going to I'm going to add a try catch. And on the catch, if there is a problem, I'm going to emit. Sign in. Failure, OK sign in failure um, if before the try catch I'm going to emit emit sorry 
sign in uh, loading, all right? And now I'm gonna add the async per, uh, parameter on this function because we're gonna use some asynchronous methods. I'm gonna say await user repository and I'm gonna access the sign in method that we've created uh, earlier on today. And here to access the email and password that are provided within our sign-in required, I'm just calling event, okay, event right there, dot email and events dot password. Okay, that's just that. Okay. There is one only one other um event that we need to um to add, and this is uh sign up required. Okay. And for the sign up required. We just need to say uh, await user repository dot logout. That's that. And I think the yeah, async needs to be not here. I don't remember here. All right. So that's that's pretty much it for for our signing block. So yeah, it's it's done complete. So now that we have our signing block, we're gonna do our sign up block. All right. So I'm gonna close all that up. And I'm going to open our sign in block. So event, block, and state. Okay, let's start with the uh, event, shall we? So here, same concept. It's really sign up required. Okay, that's going to extend sign up event. All right. Here are two parameters my user. Okay, and another parameter that's going to be the password. Because remember, it's not embedded within our class. We could, but we didn't. Uh, now let's create the um, the constructor of this event. So sign up required, and we're gonna say we're gonna pass it the user first, and then the password. Okay, and perhaps we can also add some parameters to the props. Up, just like that, and I can save that up. Now creating the states, same stuff as before. So I'm gonna spare you. Sign up success, sign up failure, sign up in process. Okay, sign up in process, sign up loading. It doesn't really matter, it's the same as long as you understand yourself. Um, sign up block. So now let's create the block. So again, we're gonna need a user repository object. Okay, final user repository. I'm gonna make that private. So the underscore here is to make it private. Okay. And I'm going to pass it within our constructor right there. I'm going to save that up. And here we're going to implement our sign up, not event, but sign up required. Remember the way we've built our block earlier on? It's the exact same thing here. Before the try catch, I'm going to init sign up uh, process. Okay. If it catches something, I'm going to re I'm going to say sign up failure. So that means something happened. Otherwise, I'm going to init sign up success like this. OK, so I'm going to add the asynchronous keyword right there. And within the try before um, doing anything, two things. I'm going to sign up the user and I'm going to set the user data to Firebase storage, uh, to Firebase Firestore, to our database. OK, so first things first, I'm going to say my user, my user is equal to await user repository dot sign up. Okay. And here I need to access my user, which is within my event. Okay. And I also need to access the password, which is within my event as well. And it's not called my user, but it's called my, it's called user in the event. Okay. And remember the sign up method, we've created it earlier. Okay, it's a future that returns a my user and it returns a my user because remember we changed the ID of the uh, of the user with the one that was provided by the Firebase authentication. So that's exactly why we need it right here, because we are now going to set this data within our database and we need the right ID. Otherwise, we're going to have an ID that is one thing in the authentication services and an ID that is another thing in our database. And you don't know who's who then. So like this, you keep track of everything. And then we're setting up the stuff within our database. So user repository dot set user data. Okay. And we're going to access not events dot user. You could say that, but the problem if you say that is that you access the user that doesn't has the uh, new updated ID. Okay. We want to pass my user. Okay. Here, not events dot user and save that thing. 
and that's that. We're done for the signup block, okay? So we can collapse all of these things. I can close that and we can go back to our welcome screen. So here in our welcome screen, so what did I do? So we have a scaffold, a single child scroll view. It's really just UI stuff, but let me just import the uh, sign-in block. Let me just import the sign-in block, remove that and import the sign-in screen. Sign up block, I'm gonna import that, just remove that and import the sign up screen. If I save that, uh, you will see, I need to import those stuff, but you will see that we have no errors anymore right there. So now we are gonna create or just import the right stuff within um, the sign up screen as well. We still have a few errors. My text field, okay, because I used my text field, so we're gonna create that as well. And I'm importing all the stuff here. Sign up process, sign in process. Ah, it's process, not loading that I am using in the UI. So sign in block state. And here, instead of sign in loading, uh, I think we need to put sign in process. Sign in process. You can make whatever you want. It's just since I'm reusing the UI that we've already created in a previous video, it needs to make sense. Uh, and in the block as well, I need to change it. Uh, sign in process. Yeah, just like that. Um, okay, good. Oh, my bad. Sign in process. Beautiful. Okay, good. Yep. So a few things. Yeah, my text field. So that's what I was telling you about the other, uh, the beginning of the video. You can have some stuff within the component here, a uh, folder. I am thirsty because you're gonna reuse the component in, a diff in, in all the different places. So basically here, what I've done already, and it's creating a file that's called my text field. Dot dart. And here, basically the file is this one. And so basically it's uh, my text field, okay? Extend the stateless widget. And it takes a bunch of parameters that are parameters that are, um, uh, parameters that can be activated within the text form field, right? And it's just for me to have uh, then a custom and a, a global uh, field to use throughout my screens, okay? So I can just scroll down uh, and you can just pause the video to recreate that thing or go on the GitHub and see how it's done. Uh, but it's really straightforward, really. There is nothing really to say about that. So yeah, that's just that, okay. So let's move on. I'm gonna import that and I'm gonna refresh and then I'm gonna walk you through it, okay? So I'm just gonna import that thing here in sign in screen and import that thing here in sign up screen. Okay, I have one more error right there. Yes, okay, we'll deal with that later. Okay, let me just refresh everything. Up, refresh again. Okay, perfect. So. You can see now that we have something going on on the app, which is pretty amazing. So there is some little uh, stuff happening there because I need to add Cupertino icons to my pospec.yaml file. So I will just do that right now. On the main pospec.yaml file, import Cupertino icons. Okay. And reload the app itself. Okay. So as you can see here, we are inside the welcome screen. Okay. And that's basically the core where we have our um, our tab view, right? We have a sign in and a sign up, okay? So here in the sign in, we have a scaffold, single shell scroll view and everything. So that's really just all of the stack here is for the, the, the uh, colors behind, okay? So we have a container with some height and width and a decoration with some, um, some colors, all right? Uh, pretty straightforward. You can change the color. You can do whatever you want there. Really doesn't matter. The backdrop filter that allows us to have this blurry effect. Okay. And uh, what's really important then is the tab bar here, which um, has some up. Oh, let me just up. Oh, okay, good. So the tab bar that has a controller, okay, that controls the scrolling right there. Uh, and then you have sign in and sign up as the two tabs within it. 
and then expand it. Uh, uh, the expansion of the rest of the screen is the tab bar view where we have our block provider of type sign in block for the sign in screen and our block provider of type sign up block for the sign up screen right here. Okay. And uh, in the sign in screen, so let's get this one first. Okay. A few things going on. So we have a, a stateful widget. Okay. And we have a few parameters right there. So a password a controller, email controller. Okay. So for those two text fields, a form key controller, a sign in required. Okay. So that's just for the button to change as a circular progress indicator once you click on it. Uh, icon password in order to be able to see what you're typing. Okay. If I'm typing right there, you can see that uh, if I click on it, I see and then I, not, I don't see. So that's as well what's the obscure password uh, parameter is uh, right there. And we have an error message if you try to log in, but don't feel everything. Okay. How's the widget, how's the, yeah, the, 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 um, the sign in script bill. So we have a block listener first. Okay. Of type sign in block. So the block listener is just going to listen, say uh, if the state is sign in success, then the sign in required. So the loading is going to stop. Okay. Signing in progress, the loading is going to go because the signing required is equal to true. And if there is some failure, we're just going to display some message. Then we have a form. Okay. We have a form that is too much instantiated as I can see. Okay. So the form takes a key. All right. So here it's our form key. Then we have a column. All right. And this column takes, well, two uh, size box, which are my text field. Okay. And my text field is the custom uh, text form field that I have that we've created up there in my text field. Okay. And takes a few parameters that are either optional or not. The controller, for example, is not optional. Uh, and you can make all of the different stuff here as you want. And we have a validator, as you can see here, that's going to say if you didn't fill the email address, um, fill this field. And if the reject uh, is not uh, valid, uh, it's going to tell you as well, if I just say that, it's going to say, please enter a valid email because the reject expression is not corresponding to an email. Okay. So that's, that's that. And uh, we have the other uh, text field right there, which is for the password. Okay. So as well, the password has a regex right here. Okay. Um, that is a bit complex and that's way too complex for <laughs> this uh, update, this uh, testing video, but it's basically because we want to have one uppercase, one lowercase, a number, a special characters and eight characters minimum. Okay. So that's what this regex says right there. Okay. And, um, and yes, that's pretty much it. Uh, then we have the button, the suffix button that I talked to you about. Okay. And uh, on press is going to set state to the uh, icon password um, icon right here. Okay. And the icon itself is the icon password that we have as a parameter at the very top here of our, um, of our sign up screen, uh, sign in screen, sorry. Uh, and under that, we have our size box for our text button. Okay. For our sign in button. And as you can see, if sign in requires is is not really, it's not, uh, I mean, if sign requ requ required is true, then uh, we are going to see the circular progress indicator. If not, we have our text button with a, here a text button that has an on press method that checks the current state of the form. And if it's validate, then it's going to call the sign in block and add a new event, which is sign in required and pass it the email and the password. Okay. That's basically what this thing does. All right. And then we have some styling for the button and uh, for the text itself as well. So that's it for the sign in screen straightforward. Then the sign up screen, the sign up screen, we're going to have to modify it a little bit, but as well, let me scroll to the very top of it. All right. So we have same, a few parameter. We can delete the name actually, uh, no, not the name, but the age because we don't need the age controller. So I'm going to delete that thing up and we have form key, same icon password. All of those things I've just explained that is for the password itself in order to, for it to be secure, because as you can see here, as I'm typing some stuff, it tells me that I'm, I've added them, 
right? It's just for a, a more UI seamless integration, right? So you have that and same, you have a block listener as the root of the widget that listen, if it's sign up success, then it's just gonna stop the, the, the wheel, uh, the, the circular progress indicator and you don't need that actually. And, uh, and yes, that's pretty much it, same thing. Then you have a form as well, that's way too much instantiated. Let me just fix that up. Oops. Scroll to the top. Okay, so now we have this here at the very bottom that needs in instantiation. Okay, sorry for that, but now, okay, you have a form, all right, and it's the same principle as earlier with the, with the form key. And then you have di different size box that contains text fields, uh, my text fields, okay? So these are customs and it's exactly the same. You have here for the email, the password, I just show you, but here you have the unchanged that, that's gonna parameter that's called from my text field that will change the color for each stuff, okay? So it's really, really straightforward. Look at the GitHub if you want the code right there or uh, pause the screen as I'm scrolling down because it makes no sense for me to, um, to explain that. Uh, suffix icon works the same, validator works the same as well. So really, really uh, nothing much to say about that. Then you have the row and uh, for those um, little information so the users know. Uh, the name, we're gonna keep that field. <coughs> Sorry. We're gonna keep the name field, but we're gonna delete the H controller field right there. Up. save that thing okay and we have here our button that's uh, working exactly the same uh, but here I've commented that because we didn't implement it the copy with method for our my user because here I say my user is equal my user dot empty okay so that's that but now we just we can just populate my user straight up okay so we can say uh, that my user here we're just gonna change dot email is equal to email controller dot text, okay. And uh, my user dot name is equal to name controller dot text. That's pretty much it. All right. And then we are calling set state, but you don't need that uh, to uh, add the sign up required from our sign up block, and we're trying to sign up the user. So, and then you have a little styling and the styling as well for the text itself and the circular progress indicator button. Okay, let's refresh everything, pop up a debug console and try to create an account. Perhaps I've missed something. So let's say test at gmail.com. Oh, yeah, that's my keyboard sometimes, my bad. Test at gmail.com password test one two three four okay name roma all right let's clear the console and see if we have some errors sign up in progress authenticated and now we are redirected to the home screen which is nice and now if we go to firebase inside the authentication you see that we have a new user with the ID that was provided by Firebase Authentication, look at this ID right here, HLT, I don't know. And if we go to Firestore, we have a new users collection with the same ID, I, uh, you know, the same ID right here and the right fields within it, okay? Well, well done guys, that, that's pretty cool. We have everything uh, working right now for the users, so, now we can create the UI. Uh, we're not gonna create this page right here. We're just straight up, the home screen is gonna look something like that, okay? So we can start perhaps building this because we are done with the, um, with the authentication process. So that's pretty cool. Uh, how long? One hour and 48 minutes. It's gonna be a long one, this one. I'm telling you because I think I'm not gonna cut it in a few, in few parts. So uh, yeah, it's just gonna have to, uh, to be a long one. So I'm gonna take a break and you should do the same now because we've worked very good. And if you need more uh, that it works, navigate to leave screens, home uh, view, 
uh, home screen uh, dot dark and here navigate to background colors and just say colors dot red and you see we are inside the home screen now so that's pretty cool uh, so i'm taking five minutes uh, i will be back right now you should pause the video and take five minutes as well and we'll be back uh, just now all right let's create uh, the ui now shall we and we are i think first going to create the ui and then we're going to make the ui dynamic i think that's fair um, so because we've done a lot of uh, background uh, back-end kind of stuff so it's better if we do a little pause of it and just start uh, working our way uh, to uh, the ui so what i want to do is within the scaffold here instead of calling colors is going to be team.ofcontext.colorscheme.background okay save that up and i hope your break was good and i hope you actually took a break because otherwise you're going to do a mental breakdown on me and that's not fine so then i'm gonna uh, call um app bar and this app bar i think i want a background color to be the same as the as the scaffold so i'm just going to call that thing and see the advantage of having a theme is just you can call the colors there and just not repeat yourself it, it, it's not it's more than not repeating yourself it's more i want to change the color of my app right i just need to navigate to the app view here and i said that the background i don't want it to be 100 but i want it to be 200 i just saved that but it's not really clear what i said perhaps i make it red see one place it changes everything instead of having to go through all of the files one by one and changing all so no that's not that's not uh, manageable so that's way better uh, so we have our app bar right here and we are going to have uh, a title that's going to be a, a row i think yeah uh, a row takes some children and a text widget within it which is going to be pizza all right we're going to add some styling to it uh, we're gonna say text style. The font weight is going to be bold. All right. The font size perhaps is going to be like twenty. That's too small. Thirty. Thirty is okay. And uh, before that, before our pizza, I want to add a little logo. And I have some images that I want to add to the projects, and they are right here. Up under my download they're here i have a few images that i've created on canva really simple stuff and i have this image i want to add so what i want to do is uh, take those images and create a new folder at the root which is going to be called assets and uh, under assets i'm not going to separate them i just i'm just going to dump all of them right right there under asset uh, up assets Okay, so now they're here. And in order for me to access them, I need to change my postpec.yaml file. I need to add a line here, the very end of it. I need, and the indentation in the postpec.yaml file is very important, all right? So follow the same indentation, otherwise it might not work. And the spaces and everything. All right, so I just add the assets folder to my postpec.yaml file. And perhaps I'm gonna need to rebuild my app, we'll see. And here I'm going to add image.asset and the name of the asset, I have no idea. I think it's eight. Yeah, let's call it this one. Eight dot PNG. And I don't know if I need to call. Yeah, well, that didn't work. Asset slash, perhaps that's better. If I rebuild my app. Yes, good. <laughs> it's gigantic. Uh, so we're going to reduce the scale by quite a lot. Yes, that that's better uh let's say 13 14 14 i said not 134 perfect well that will work and we're gonna add some sized box between our two widgets which gonna has a width of five something like this and i'm just gonna say that i add the constant parameter to everything okay good uh that looks cool uh perhaps i want to make it more bold the text i don't know if i can do that black the most thick yeah like this perfect okay so we have our title and now i want to add um i want to add here um mm -hmm. i want to add actions 
And basically, I want to add two things. I want to add the cart button and the logout button. So the first uh, button is going to be, so we're going to do icon buttons. I think it's good to have those. So icon buttons that takes an on press and an icon. All right. So the on press, we're just going to make it empty for now. And the icon, I'm going to say Cupertino icons dot, I'm going to import Cupertino dot dart. Uh, log out, uh, out, arrow out. I don't know. Every time I have to search so long for the right icons. I think there is a website that helps me out, but um, it's let's use this one arrow led to line. But arrow right to line, and I need to wrap that inside an icon widget, otherwise, that doesn't work. Okay, cool. So we have the logout button that will be here. And after this one, I want another one that's going to be cart. Yeah, this one. OK, but I want them reversed. Oops, sorry. Oh, I want to do that and paste it right here. OK, so we have our cart button right here and our logout button right here. OK, that's pretty nice. So. Uh, we can implement the logout so we can just make sure that everything is working good. Perhaps here instead of five, I'm just going to put eight. Yes, that's better. And uh, so for us to implement our uh, logout system, it's super straightforward. We just need to call context.read and here say that it's going to be, uh, I think, sign in block. And we're going to add a new event, which is sign out required. And that's it. The thing is, we didn't pass the sign in block to the home screen, right? So if I click here, it's going to say, well, I can't find the sign in block. OK, and that's normal because we didn't give it to him. So what we need to do is in the app view here is wrap our home screen with a block provider. OK, and the block provider of type sign in block. OK, and the sign in block needs a user repository as a parameter, right? So I could just say Firebase user repository and create a new instance of it, but I already have one, remember, within the authentication block. So I'm just going to access it right here and just give it to him and remove the constant and add it right there. And now if I'm rebuilding my app, if I click here, I'm logging out of the app and that's pretty much what we want. So let's try the sign in now that we didn't start, uh, try or yet. Test at gmail.com, test one, two, three, four. All right, that works. Sign in and we're in again. See, everything works amazing. So uh, with that said, we were here on the home screen. So we have the cart, we have the logout. Uh, now let's create a grid view, okay? Uh, so for that, under the app bar in the body parameter, we're going to create a grid view dot builder. And it's UI builder because the information is going to come from Firebase. So I'm just going a little bit ahead of, uh, of time. So the grid delegate. So the grid delegate is going to be a sliver grid delegate with fixed crossed account. OK. And the crossed account is going to be two. All right. So I'm just going to make that, sorry, constant. And the item builder text a context and an integer, OK, to know the item within the list, because a grid view is basically a list, but with different parameters uh, horizontally, but scrolling vertically. I mean, you can do whatever you want, really. But here, let's just say that we have some containers and just access the color of it and make it red. And we're going to say that the item count is four. Save that up. Now you, you're going to tell me, Romain, that's terrible. Uh, we only have one item right there. Well, you'd be wrong, my friend, because if you do um, cross axis spacing and we're going to set that to 10 and main axis spacing within the grid delegate that we set to 10 again, bam, you see that we actually have four of them, as is our item count right here. So I'm going to wrap that with some padding, wrap the grid view with some padding. Uh, I'm going to say 16. OK, good. And here, the thing with the grid view is by default, it's squared, right? 
and we don't really want something that's square. We would like something more that's more of a rectangle, right? But the cool thing is you can ha you can access the child aspect ratio in it. And uh, if you say nine divided by 16, you'd have something that's way closer than what we want, right? And we can actually build on that. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So um, let's create the UI for the cart here, okay? So let me zoom in a little bit so I see better inside the UI on my other screen. So uh, the container here is a good idea, but first, instead of the color, we're gonna access the decoration parameter and set it to a box decoration. The box decoration of this thing is going to be a little bit weird, but for now, we're just going to keep it simple by saying that the border radius is equal to the border radius dot circular. And for now, we're just going to say like something like 20. That really didn't work. Oh yeah, that did. It's just, I put the color away. So let me just put <laughs> the color back in so we can see something. Okay. Um, and actually here, what I want to do is say that we want some box shadow. Okay. So a box shadow is a list actually of box shadow. And this thing takes some parameters. So the parameters that this thing takes is, um, so it takes an offset that I want to set to offset like, I don't know, three and three. Okay. So for now, oh, I'm going to just say that the color here is white. Okay, uh, the color is way too black. <laughs> so uh, color, sorry, color. And here we're gonna say colors.gray. That's still too much. So gray.shade 400 or something like this. Okay, now we're gonna say blur radius. The blur radius, perhaps two or something like this. Perhaps five. Yeah, five is good. Um, the shade, we can turn that turn that a notch three is fine yeah like it perhaps i want the cross to be bigger um well yeah it's just ui stuff here i'm just yeah that's better so uh i'm gonna put 16 here as well but I want to be able to see the pizza gig as well, but they can click on it as well. So yeah, we're going to keep that. I think it's pretty, it looks, it looks cool. See, and since it's a, um, it's, it's a list view, right? It's a grid view. You can scroll that thing. So here, if I say that the item count is going to, is eight instead of four, you see that we uh, have eight items within it. Okay. And that's going to be cool because we're going to get items from our database. And so we're going to just set that dynamically and it's going to give us the right amount of, of, uh, of stuff. So for now, I've put the uh, pictures here, but we're going to put them in Firebase storage so we can access them dynamically. But for now, since we're building it, I just want to have everything on hand. So uh, we're going to access the child parameter of the container and set that to a column. Colon takes a children parameter and the first one. So now for now, it's going to be image assets, but we're going to change that later on to a network image, as I just said. And just for now, we're just going to ac access the first one that I see, which is the one.png. One.png up and set that to. Yeah, cool. OK, so that would be the image of the pizza that we have up there. Um, OK. Uh, then under that, we'll have a row. A row takes some children as well. And here we'll have a container. Uh, and we're going to access the decoration parameter of it and set the border radius, board, border radius, the border radius circular dot 30 or yeah, 30 or something like this. But the most important thing is to say that this has a child parameter that's going to be a text. And here um, we are going to say, we're going to make it dynamic later on. Don't worry about that. But for now, we're just going to say non, non veg, save that up and say that here the color is going to be red. Non veggie. Okay. And we're going to access the style parameter of our text, text style. 
all right so the color is going to be colors dot white okay uh, the font weight is going to be bold the font size is going to be like something like 10 we don't want it to be big yeah and we most certainly want some padding around that thing so i'm going to wrap the text widget with some padding if i can find it it's here i'm going to save that that's too much uh, so i want something that is symmetric in terms of padding so i want a vertical padding of let's say something four and a horizontal padding of something like eight double i'm going to save that yes that's something that i could work with uh here uh, what I am thinking is I'm going to add some padding to the row and I don't want to add it directly to the column because I don't want to add padding to the image. It's already, it's already good sized in my opinion. So I'm just going to have to settle to add padding on each items uh, down the road. Uh, and here I just want to say, um, I just want to say symmetric and I want to say horizontal 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 i'm gonna say eight uh yeah eight or 12 12 12 is okay um so non-veggie so that's that i'm gonna add some constant keywords so we can see something and um perhaps so we are gonna copy the container that was just created and paste it right here and add some size box between those two of width, I have no clue, eight, something like this. Yes, that works. Uh, and this uh, we can say, for instance, now green uh, as a color and um, let's say balance. For the spice. Uh, Okay, and what I like to do, what I'd like to, yeah, what, what, what is cool here is they have some sort of a shade. So here you'd have a text that's green, but something shade that's really more than that, like 100, yeah, something like this. And it's extra bold, this thing. Yeah, yeah, something like that. I think um, it's even like with opacity, we could even go like this in like zero point, like zero point um, zero eight or something like this, or nine. Because if I say one, it's just, yeah. Yeah, that's that's good. That's good. I'm gonna add a pepper here. Do they have a pepper icon? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, I think that works well. I think that works well. Um, and we are gonna change the color dynamically based on what we have from our uh, database. Okay, but for now, let's keep it at that. Perhaps that's the text a bit too big. Eight could be okay. Well, let's, let's leave it at 10 for now, okay. So under uh, the row that we had, um, tick, 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 under the row that we have, I'm just going to take the padding and up, I'm going to add a new padding up and I'm going to paste the same one and access the child parameter and set that to a text widget. That's going to be for now. Um, uh, what's the name of the pizza we're just going to take the same one that they have on the ui because i am not inspired cheesy marvel <laughs> which is a cool name for a pizza so um add some size box to it um let's say height of like something like 12 to be consistent from what we had earlier that's a bit too much eight uh, let's see, because we're going to add some styling to the text, text style. Um, so the font weight on this thing is going to be way bigger, like something like 18. Yeah. The font weight is going to be as well, like something like bold. Yeah. Uh, and I think we can even make like 20 for 
the, the yeah I, I like that uh, one thing that I want to add except from the con the constant parameter is on our column here I want to say cross axis alignment cross axis alignments dot start okay so we have all of our text to the left okay so we have that um, and then under um, the cheesy Marvel widget, <laughs> we're going to have another text widget that's going to be the description. Uh, so I'm just going to say what they say in the crafting joy, your pizza, your rules best taste okay so that's definitely not the right um, up the right stuff that we want to say so that's going to be something like 10 uh, I want to say the font weight is going to be normal or 300 maybe yeah yeah I want a font weight to be to be very light but I want the color to be gray more gray more gray like 700 yeah because it's constant up yeah that's better that's cool that's very cool okay perhaps i can make that normal yeah so i can just delete it then <laughs> okay cool um so we have that and now the last thing that we need to add is the last row for the price so i'm just going to take that uh and instead of having a text right here for now at least i'm going to have a row okay with some children uh the first one is going to be a text widget so i'm just going to take that thing okay and this is not going to be that but it's going to be like for example i don't know what the prices were on this design but i think it's crazy expensive so <laughs> So we're going to, going to go something like this. Oh, yeah, with the dollars, you need to escape that thing. Uh, let's add uh, let's add some padding to that thing. But we're going to do differently instead of adding some padding. We're just going to pin that to the bottom. And I don't think that we can straight up do it right here with an align widget. Alignment dot bottom center. Bottom, 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 bottom center. Yeah, no, we can't do it like this. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, let's remove this widget. Uh, but for now, let's just focus on the uh, on the text itself. So it's going to be 18 or yeah, 20 to keep it to be consistent. Uh, this is going to be um, our theme dot of context dot color scheme dot primary. Okay, the font weight is going to be well. The font weight is going to be like 700. Yeah. Um, okay. Twelve dot zero zero. Um, then they have another text widget next to it. I'm gonna add a little size box with a width of like five, something like this. And I'm gonna paste the same widget, but this time, uh, it's like I'm gonna say like fifteen. And uh, this is going to be like 16 in terms of um, of size. Um, and uh, the color is going to be gray. Yeah, it's going to take the same gray. Oh, that's a big, that's, a, that's too gray, actually. Yeah, that's 500 is better. And if that could be 500, yeah, that can be 500. Okay, so we have that. Uh, and now we need to, uh, to add a, a last button to it, uh, which is going to be the button to add this thing to your, um, to your cart. But uh, I'm wondering if we're going to have the space because this thing is perhaps too big. So perhaps I'm going to make that 16. I'm going to make that like 14, even like 12. Yeah, like that we have the space. 
because now I want to have an icon button. I'm gonna have an on press for now that's gonna be no, all right? And an icon that's gonna be like add. So that's gonna be icon, cupertino icons dot add. Yeah, okay, good dot add, but I don't like this one. I want to have, can we have an add square? We can't have an add square. No, okay, I'm gonna settle for that one then. That's fine. Okay, um, so a few things. So we want this thing to be at the very end of it, but I don't know if you've followed the channel, you've seen in the last video uh, that we've done for Tinder, this is within a row, right? So this is, well, I have the sun in my eyes. This is within the row. So uh, the thing is, if I'm here and I say that I want the main axis alignment, so main axis alignment to be at the end, okay? It's gonna move everything to the end, right? And I don't want to move everything to the end. That's not the goal here. I just want this thing to be separated from those two things, okay? So how I do it is just wrap my row within the row, okay? And here, I say main axis alignment, main axis alignment dot space between, okay? And I can remove that thing and I can take away my button that's within the second row, okay? And paste it after within the, the other row itself. And see now it's separated. So that's pretty cool. That's, that, that's what we want, okay? So that's exactly that. And uh, the last thing that we want to do is here. Um, font style. Uh, font style here and say font style. Dot, that's not font style. That's decoration. Text decoration dot overline, not overline line through yes okay good perfect okay so we have our ui ready so that's pretty cool that looks nice no i think it looks cool so we have that and so when we click on that thing we'll add the uh, pizza to our cart and when we click on our cart we'll be able to see the list of the pizza that we've added uh, to the cart itself okay now I want to make uh, the detail screen so we can add the pizza to the cart, but we can also click on the cart itself right here and uh, be directed to the um, detail of the, uh, of the pizza. So what we can do is uh, within our column, within our container here, wrap our container with an inkwell widget and add the on tap parameter of it. Save that and you see normally, okay, so that if I wrap that with a material, okay, it's behind it because now I can just do that. Let me see if that works, huh? Because I, yeah, no, that's the problem. Okay, let me check one thing and I'll be back with you in just one second if I can find my mouse, okay. All right, so I've uh, I found what I was looking for. So basically, I've wrapped my container with an inkwell widget that I've wrapped with the material widget, okay? And uh, I've commented all of the decoration that we've added to our container because we don't need it anymore. We can delete actually the container for uh, the decoration and we can delete the container itself. Um, and what I've added add, uh, to the material is the elevation of three. So we have a little elevation of the material right there. Uh, we have the color of it that's white and the shape that's putting some borders to it, okay? Uh, and the inkwell, I've added a border radius of 20, so it matches the one that we have on the material, okay? And once we click on it, we actually see some feedback, okay? And I think that's pretty cool, and that's something that you would want to have in your app, okay? So, uh, so yeah, so once the user knows 
uh, that uh, it can uh, actually navigate to those uh, to those cards all right so what we have next is the detail right so the detail page so uh, how are we going to craft that thing so once we click on that thing so under home views uh, we're going to create a new file that we're going to call uh, pizza underscore detail or just details screen dot dart and we're going to create a stateless widget for now pizza screen no pizza detail detail screen sorry details screen okay save that so what's the detail screen so that's going to be a scaffold okay i'm going to save that and for now what i want to do is uh just uh say that here on the inkwell property on tap so we're going to say navigator i see nothing navigator dot push and so here the push takes the context and a root okay so the context and a root so we're going to modify the root so as you can see in the documentation it's a material root that we have so you can just copy that thing paste that thing here because we don't have a router in our app not necessary for now okay and the page that we're looking for is details screen save that and now when we click on this we are redirected to the details screen here all right so if i have an app bar in my scaffold okay i will have the uh, arrow back button that i can just use to navigate back to the home screen okay so um, I'm going to take a few things from our uh, home screen, the background color. I want it to be the same in my uh, detail screen within the scaffold and within the app bar. OK, so that's seamless. All right. Um, we could add some hero uh, animation here uh, for it to be cool. Yeah, we could do that. Uh, so um, under the app bar, I'm going to have a body. Let's navigate to it, a body. And here I'm going to have a column that takes some children. So the first one that I have is going to be a container that's going to have a width of media query dot off context dot size dot width. So it takes the entire screen and a height of the width. So it's a square. OK, I'm going to add a decoration parameter box decoration. For now, I'm just going to add a color to it in order to see what I've done. Yep. OK. And uh, I am going to add some border radius to it, border radius dot circular, and we're going to say 30. OK, I'm going to add some padding to the to the column. OK, so for now it's just eight, but I want it to be at least double, uh, but I don't want it to be double everywhere. So I'm just going to say symmetric here. I'm going to say horizontal is going to be 16 and I don't want any vertical for now. OK, let's see how that looks. Yeah. More. OK, horizontal 20, perfect. And so my height is going to be minus. 40, because we have it two times here and here, 20 plus 20, it's 40. So we have a square, so you need to be consistent. Uh, so we have that. So here I want to put the image itself within it, right? So what I want to do is uh, uh, I can straight up call image within the decoration, decoration image. And uh, let's see, decoration image. So here asset image, but now later on we'll do network image. Don't worry. And for now, asset slash one dot PNG for now. Yeah, that works. Amazing. Um, and so I don't want it to be red. Obviously, I want it to be white. Uh, and uh, I am going to add some border, some shadows to it. Uh, so box shadow, exactly how we done previously. Box shadow, I'm going to say the offset is going to be offset like three and three. And the blur radius is going to be like five. And the color is definitely not going to be black. Color is going to be colors dot gray. Yeah. Okay.
So that's that's cool. I like it. Can add some constant parameter everywhere. Uh, now uh, we have that, and under it uh, we will um, we will add some more information. Okay. Um, tick, 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 tick. I'm thinking right now. So we'll have. So we have our container right here. I'm just gonna take that one. I'm gonna add a size box of like height 20 or 30, let's see. And I'm gonna paste that thing again. Okay. So now I'm just not gonna add some width and height. I'm gonna delete. I'm gonna delete what well, I'm going to delete. I'm going to delete uh, the image. I don't need that. But what I need is the child parameter of this container. So the child parameter of this container is going to be a column that takes some children, as always, that never changes. So the first parameter is going to be a row with some children to it. And the first children is going to be a text widget. Uh, so for now, it's going to be truffle, temptation, temp extravaganza something like this save that up okay um gonna add some style to the to that thing so text style so that's our the title of our pizza so um so the title need to be big so we're gonna say font size it's gonna be like something like 20. um the color is gonna be like the color is good, but the font weight, font weight is going to be like font weight dot extra bold. Or I can just say bold. That's fine. Okay. Um, so that would be the text. And then we'll have another text widget linked to it. And here we're going to do something cool. So um, we're going to have the price of the pizza. So we've said $12 previously. Oh my God, $12.00, okay. I need to escape the dollar, done. Um, and this, uh, so what we need here, see we have a, we have something that's uh, over overflowing our app, right? And we don't want that. So what we're gonna do is wrap our text widget with another widget, which is called expanded. And we're gonna do the same for the price, wrap it with uh, another expanded widget and basically what I want to do now is say that the text has a flex of like, let's say, double the size of what the price can be, okay? And that's going to put everything in perspective right now, okay? That's pretty cool. Um, the thing I want to do is add some padding to that thing, uh, to the whole container, to the whole column, sorry. I'm going to add some padding. Uh, yes, okay. Um, more sure more uh, so i want to have so i want to say tch, tch, tch. yeah let's see let's try 16. okay 16. okay uh so here on our row i'm gonna say main axis alignment main axis alignment dot space between and that is not bringing my my stuff to the end of it uh, I don't think it can actually because it's in the middle of it. Uh, tch, tch, tch. Uh, mm -hmm. See here, it's here, but I would like it to be there. But I don't know if I can do that. Uh, if I say align alignment dot center right. Well. Of course I can. Well done. Uh, I'm going to add some constant keywords. Okay. So here for our price, the sun is setting. Beautiful. The color is going to be theme dot of context dot color scheme dot primary. Okay. Just because I've put everything constant before. So now we have problems. Okay. Uh, 12 good 12 euros um and they have put actually they have put actually the price the the crossed price under that so here under my 
I'm going to wrap my text widget with a column and I'm going to add another text widget just under it and say that this was 15, not 20, but like 16 in terms of space. And the column here, I'm going to add the cross axis alignment to be at the end. The color of the second one is going to be colors.gray gray and the decoration of it nope the decoration of it is going to be a text decoration and a text decoration dot overline no i've made the same mistake line through line through okay good okay nice Okay, good, perfect. Perhaps we want a little bit more padding, telling that to myself. Okay, 20 sounds amazing. Um, okay, good. Next up, we have under this uh, row that we just created, another stuff, which is going to be, um, the macros of the pizza because we're also gonna gonna take the macros of the pizza uh so um i'm thinking to myself uh yeah let's just let's just make it simple so we're gonna have a row again of children and here we're gonna say expanded and the child is gonna be up container so we're just gonna create one for now and then we're just gonna duplicate it container so container container uh we're gonna have some um yeah container some decoration to it box decoration the color is white uh no the color is gray colors dot gray but like a light gray but 200 perhaps uh, yes, uh, we're going to have some border radius to it. Border radius is going to be like border radius and circular. It's going to be something like 20, something like that. Um, and we're going to have some box shadows to it. Box shadow, which is again a list box shadow. And we're going to have an offset that's going to be offset, let's say 2-2. Two, two, and a blur radius that's going to be of like 5 again. Okay, and the child parameter of the container uh, is going to be a column. I hope you're following along and I'm not going too fast. If I am, just uh, put the video in slow motion. Um, but it's already two hours and a half of a video. So yeah, it's good. So the column and here we're going to have an icon. Uh, so here, Cupertino icons, but we're going to use another package that's better. That's fire. Yeah, we don't care about the uh, the we don't care about the uh, icon yet. Uh, icon like that, and under that we're gonna have a text widget that's gonna say like uh, four hundred and sixty seven seven calories. Okay. Um, right. So now, if I add some. I'm going to put the constant keyword a bit everywhere. So that looks terrible, but don't worry. Give me one second. So I'm going to have a sized box right here of a height of uh, 12. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's that. Uh, then what I do not like at all is the color of that thing. So perhaps gray shade 100 or even just white, you know, I think white could look good, white on white, yeah. The color, though, of the shadow is way too dark, gray. Yeah, that's better. Uh, and now I need some padding with my column. Uh, some padding. Okay, good. And now this is where the fun is going to take place. And here the icon, I want it to be... I want it to be red. 
got red. Red accent looks better. Um, and uh, yes, so that uh, the here I'm gonna add some some text, some style to the um, to the text itself because I want the font size to be like something like ten. I really don't want something to be. I don't want it to be too big. Font size. 10, uh, perhaps 12, no, 10 was fine, 10 was fine, okay, and so now I'm going to take the expanded container that, I, that I've got, and I'm going to duplicate that thing four times, okay, good, I'm going to add some size box to it, size box of width let's say 10 okay and we're gonna make it a little bit more understandable guys huh just in a second okay good uh so what i'm going to do now since i like that thing uh is just going to create a component so up i'm gonna take I'm going to take the uh, expanded, okay? I'm going to go to components, new file. I'm going to call that file uh, macro.dart. And I'm going to say that um, macro widget is equal to that. Up. Very good. Okay, um, but, 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 uh, macro widget is equal to that, yes and no, because I want to be able to send some parameters to it. So what I'm going to do instead of doing that is create actually a stateless widget that I'm going to call my macro widget. And I'm going to return the expanded widget that I had, okay? Okay, good. I can delete what I just did. And uh, I can save that. And now within my detail screen, instead of calling the expanded, I can just call my macro widget, import component, make it constant. And instead of having like 200 lines of code, I replace everywhere where is uh, my expanded stuff with my macro widget. And we should be good to go. So it's more understandable for you all. Okay, and the first one is here. Okay, tech. Perfect. Up. I'm gonna save that. See, nothing happened. Very cool. Um, and so now we want to change a bit, a few things. So for the macro widget, we're gonna have a few parameters. So we're gonna have first uh, the title. That's gonna be a string. Sorry. Okay. Uh, required this dot title. Okay. And so um, the title is going to be uh, the number itself. And on. Yeah, let's let's think of the dynamic stuff. So that is the value that will come from um, the database, all right? And this is the title. So we'll have title and we'll have an integer or perhaps a string. An integer that's going to be, or yeah, an integer that's going to be uh, the value itself. Required this dot value, okay? And so here I'm going to say value and here I'm going to say title. Invalid constant value. Yes. All right. Delete the constant, save that thing. Now it's not happy because we didn't provide it anything. So how, how about we do that? Title, so that will be calor uh, calories, the first one. Calories, all right. And the value is going to be 267. Okay, I'm just going to copy that 
everywhere. And the second one is going to be protein. The third one is going to be fat. And the last one is going to be carbs. Okay, so proteins, we're going to say 36, 36, uh, 21 gram of fat and 38 uh, gram of carbs. Okay, and so now you see in the app that changed. So we have uh, 267 calories and all of that thing. So I don't like that the circular border is so circular, so that's better. Um, and I don't like as well that the shade of this thing is too bright. It's too, it's too dark. Okay, that's a bit better. Perhaps 400 would be a good compromise. Yeah, okay, well, this is good now. Uh, I'm gonna add a little size box of a height of like four between those elements. So it's a little bit more square. And now we need some icons to it as well because the plane doesn't mean a thing, right? So um, I think uh, there is a cool package. Uh, where is internet? There is a cool package that we have. Uh, that's pub.dev. Uh, icons, uh, five icons, I think, something like this. Uh, it's not that. Uh, icons, let me find that thing super popular uh let me go get back to you when i have it okay i got it it's font awesome flutter so let's just take this package copy it inside our prospect.yaml file under that font awesome flutter um and uh once we have done that we can access the um the cool icons so uh, tick, tick, tick. let me check how that works again so we have here icon and something like this okay so instead of having a cupertino icon right here would have something like font icon something like this right i guess this is not constant this was not the problem what was the problem uh should we use that yeah exactly okay so you use it like this uh, and the color of that thing is going to be colors red accent okay save that gamepad so that's still not what we want but we're closer um we can put the constant keyword as well so fire yeah that's good so we want a font awesome icon as a parameter as well so up just gonna call that icon and we're gonna add that to the constructor of our widget required this dot icon okay save that thing can remove cupertino we don't need that anymore and so for here we're gonna have icon it's gonna be fav up dot fire Where am I in here? Up. I'm gonna import this. Okay, icon data solid. So that's not uh, that's not a font on some icon. It's an icon data solid. It, apparently, that works. No. It's icon data. Apparently. Is that that? Yes, that was that. Okay, good, perfect. So I can just copy that thing over the others. Save that thing, okay. And here I don't have fire, I have a weight. I have a dumbbell. That didn't work. Oh yeah, I know why it didn't work. Uh, because here it's icon uh, tick, 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 find some icons and here icons icon yep 
Okay, good. Uh, then we have some like meat. kind of icon I can put here I don't have the um, I don't have the um, yeah that could work and carbs like bread A bread okay good well that that's okay uh yeah that will work right that's cool um perhaps we need to add some grams to those things uh so that will be here we have our icon where we have our value and we can say um we can say two things because this doesn't need the gram but this would be so we can say here two things so if so we don't need to say if so so title is equal to calories calories then we want that thing otherwise we'll want to have up to have that thing yeah perfect amazing good so uh, everything is still recording yes it is so we are almost done with the uh, with the ui here we just need to add now in our detail screen a new button under our row i'm gonna put up a size box and here we're gonna say uh we're gonna make um uh, we're gonna say what size box with media query dot of context dot size dot width and we're going to say height of like 50 we're going to say child that's going to be a text button that takes an unpressed parameter okay as well as a child parameter which here is going to be a text which is going to be by now okay so few things uh, and we can get inspiration from our authentication views sign-in screen here because we're ut utilizing text button. So I'm going to take the style that I have from here, okay? And I'm going to paste it here inside the, um, the text button under the unpressed. Okay, good. So few things. So here, the background color of the button, I want it to be colors.black okay good i want the elevation to be okay three that's fine uh, but the border radius to be like something like 20 or 10 yeah something like 10 and i want the height of that thing to be way bigger like 40 or something yeah okay good and now i want to add some styling and i will inspire myself from that thing as well so I just don't have to write uh, it all again. So let's add some style to the button, but here let's make that like 24. Well, that was too much, 22, 20. Allez, let's settle on 20. 20 and uh, what's that, medium? See my bold, yeah, that's fine. See my bold, okay. Let's add some constant uh, stuff to the file. And I think that's pretty good. I think uh, I think we have something a UI that makes a lot of sense uh, in a way where we have uh, our login stuff. So remember, we have sign ins and re and uh, create an account. So sign up, and here I say test at gmail.com to sign in. Test one two three four, and I sign myself in. I'm redirected to. The home screen where i have a list of all of the pizzas available if i click on one pizza i have the detail of the pizza itself with the price and the promotion that was there i can buy it now and i see the different calories that, that are there for uh, for the pizza itself 
So I think that's pretty cool. I think that's pretty cool. So now the, the things that we need to do now, let's recap. So the thing that we need now are um, to make that, um, to make that, um, that app dynamic in a way where we store those pizza within our database, okay? Uh, and we display them right here uh, and create this little cart uh, system, right? So that's what we are going to do right now. And I think after that, we're going to be pretty much done. Let's, let's do a little break and we'll back at it again. All right, guys. So let's finish this app, shall we? So now we have everything that's supposed to be where it is. Um, but it's not dynamic for the pizzas, right? Um, we could have a dashboard that's perhaps a Flutter web app, something like this to be able to create that. And do tell me in the comments if you want to see that. I can make another part where we create the admin dashboard to add pizzas and everything. But for now, we're just going to add uh, those stuff by hand, okay? So before we add them by hand, I want to create the pizza repository, okay? So the pizza repository, it's going to be the same in a sense where we're going to have the same uh, architecture as our uh, user repository, all right? So let's create that. Under pizza repository lib, we're going to have a source folder as well as a file that's going to be called uh, pizza repository dot dart. Okay. So under source, remember entities, models, and uh, two other files uh, that we have. So uh, so pizza repo dot dart and Firebase pizza repository. Firebase pizza repo dot dart. Okay. So we've created those files. So now we are going to create the entities dot dart and the pizza entity dot dart. And under models, we're going to create models dot dart as well as pizza.dart. So first things first, let's create our pizza class, class pizza. So we have a few parameters for our pizza. So we have the uh, pizza ID, which is going to be a string, pizza ID. We have a string that's going to be the picture. Okay. We have um, a Boolean is veg we have uh, an integer that's going to be spicy we have a string that's going to be the name a string that's going to be the description um, an integer that's or a double yeah a double that's going to be the price um, a double that's going to be the discount and a list of macro macros that we're going to call macros and this macros as you can see here is a custom class that we are going to create uh, ourselves so that's for the pizza class okay so I'm going to create the pizza class on my own uh, and well, I mean, you can stay here now that we have a two and a, almost three hours long video. It's not the time to cut corners, right? So let's go all the ways. And for the people already here, I'm most likely talking alone. <laughs> so uh, we're going to have this dot pizza ID. This I can go way faster than that. Up. paste that here uh, 
Okay. So that's for the constructor of our uh, pizza class. Okay. Uh, now we need um, we need two things. We need the to entity and the from entity method. Remember. So I'm gonna take so from this I'm gonna take the met the methods. All right. So it's not gonna be my user entity. It's gonna be pizza entity. Here, so we replace my user entity by pizza entity, and it's not my user, but pizza. Okay. Um, and for the parameters, well, they're here, so we're just gonna take those and uh, paste them right here. Okay. Right, and we're going to do the same exact thing for the from entity method. Up entity dot dart. Okay, good. Um, so now we need to create the pizza entity. Shall shall we? So we're just going to take that and create here inside. Pizza entity class oh, up class pizza entity that takes the same parameters and sorry up pizza entity like this and now uh, exactly as the same that we did for the user entity we need to create the to document and the from document method for this pizza entity so I'm just gonna paste that right here. Um, and so it's not a, my user entity that we're returning for the from document, but a pizza entity. And uh, let's copy those parameters. And we are going to have something interesting to do with the macros because it's a list of, of, of objects, right? So we need to make it a little bit different in order for Firebase to accept that thing, right? Uh, so now let's add the quotes okay like this perfect so this is not going to work as is but we'll come back to that at the end so now we have the same things to do for the from uh, from from document okay uh up. so except it's doc all right uh, it's not that. Did I uh, did I miss something? What's happening? Uh, ah, yeah, of course. Uh, my user entity, my user entity, pizza entity, pizza entity. The name pizza ID isn't defined. What did I do again? let me check that out yes i am obviously tired it's because i didn't put the curly break bracket uh, here on the constructor so you can't do uh, what i did uh, but i am doing it now so that should be good to go up required and that should be good perfect uh, okay, good. Uh, so as I said here, because we have a list of macros, we're going to create the macros class right now. Uh, we cannot just put this list of objects right there. So what we need to do is say map. So here we have an object of type micro. Okay. And here we're going to say E dot two, but we're going to create the macro class first, and then we're going to come back to this. Okay. So under models, here we we'll just create a new file um, uh, macros.dart we're going to create class macros and this class macros um, it has an integer that is calories an integer that is proteins proteins an integer that is fat and another integer that is carbs okay 
So let's create the constructor of that thing. Okay, so required this dot up. Okay. Um, and that's it for this class. I don't think I need anything else, really. Uh, no, I don't think I need anything else. So what I'm going to do now within the models.dart is export uh, macros.dart as well as exporting uh, pizza.dart. I'm going to do the same for entities. Uh, I'm going to do the same for entities. Export uh, pizza entity.dart. So uh, let me think. Let me think. I need um I need here a new uh, yeah of course for macros I need the I need the same stuff I need the to entity and the from entity methods so I'm just going to import that thing Sorry here in pizzas I didn't put the curly bracelet neither uh so I'm going to add that thing right now in the pizza class Um, and I can import macros as well. Okay, so let me close everything up so you understand what's happening. So we have a pizza class, okay, that takes some parameters and the list of macros, which is a custom class that we've created right here. So we need to finish that class. Th that class requires a to entity and a from entity method as well, all right? So uh, we are gonna just paste uh, copy what we've done already and just say macros here, macros entities instead of pizza entity and here instead of pizza macros and the parameters that we have are calories fat and carbs not all of those things so we are just gonna paste what we have hold on yeah paste what we have took that thing okay perfect um up Great. Um, okay. And uh, we're going to do the same for the from entity method. And we're going to add the entity keyword to it. Well, I'm starting to get tired. Entity dot. So now let's create the macros entity, okay? So under entities, we're gonna create a new file, macros underscore entity dot dart. And we're gonna paste what we have, but instead of macros, we're gonna say macros entity. Okay, macros entity, paste that here as well. Okay, good, amazing. So now within the macros dot dart, we can import micros entity um, and we need those thing otherwise that's not gonna work is it perfect okay save that up and now the macros entities we need as we had here a, f a to document and a from document method all right so we're just gonna create that and we're gonna apply it to our uh, four parameters all right so, uh, tch, 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 tch. okay. And we can just delete the rest of this thing. Okay, good. And uh, here, oh my God. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> and and delete the rest of it okay and it's not pizza entity it's macros entities micro entity okay good so now we have everything still recording still recording amazing so within our pizza entity now we can also import macros good 
And what I told you earlier is here in our pizza entity, we need we have a list of macros, right? So here we have macros, okay? And we need to put that within a, an understandable way for Firebase to, to, to store. So we're going to say he, e, so e is the macro itself, okay? Perhaps I rename that macro so you understand. Macro. And here I say macro, which is of type micros, okay? Dot to entity, dot to document, okay? And that's going to take our, because we're mapping it, it's going to take every item on the list and map it to a document, to a to document uh, uh, format. And it's the same that we have from document, right? Because here we are getting a list of something that is a, a, a map, right? So we want to uh, get actually a macros from it, a list of macros, right? So we want to say something like doc macros dot map, um, something like this, I think. Uh, macros dot from entities macros entities macro entity dot from document and here we say e dot yeah just e i think something like that could work uh we need to test that though but we'll test it uh soon enough so we can save all of that things and we have created all of the stuff that we need uh, in terms of classes. So we have the pizza class and we have the macro class. Uh, there is perhaps one more class that we need. It will be the cart, uh, the cart class. Yeah, that will be a sub collection of a, of a user. I think that's how we want to play it. I think that's what we, how we want to play that thing. Uh, let's first import some of the the stuff that we have within Firebase, and then um, and then we can start wondering about the um, about the cart. So here we're going to create a new collection that we'll call pizzas. Going to say auto ID, and here I'm going to take the parameters that uh, we've uh, we've settled it, settled on uh, earlier on, right? And we're going to just create those things right here. The pizza ID is going to be the same as the pizza itself, okay? And now we're going to add all of the fields that were that are inside our um, our class, and we are going to do that for each pizza. So I think I'm going to add four pizzas, okay? And then I'll be back with you. But I will just spare you the time, and I will just get you when I'm done. All right, so that will look something like this, okay? So we have the document ID, and I've added all of the different fields that we've uh, set in our uh, object, okay? Except for the picture, because I will put them in the storage, and then I will get the URL from there. Um, and then I've just added some dummy data to it. The discount here I set to 10, to 10 because we're going to say that it's a percentage, okay? So we're going to take 10% off the 12 euros as the price. And here I've made a little mistake in our uh, class creation because macros, I've said that it was a list of macros, but it's actually not a list of macros. It's really just macros, right? Uh, because it's a map in and of itself containing all of the information that we want. Otherwise, I should have put a, put a list straight up instead of creating a new object. And so that looks like something like this. So I can just go ahead and save that and have a new collection. Uh, that's called uh, pizza and here I have my first item within it okay and the thing I was talking to you about is um, the here our pizza and pizza entity class so here we don't have a list of macros actually but we just have macros okay and that's the same for pizza entity right here it's not a list of macros it's just macros and uh, that's going to have an impact directly here because then we can just say, say macros to entity, the to document. Uh, and here we can just say exactly that macros that from entity. Uh, and here access the doc dot, uh, well, macros parameter. Okay. So that's the only changes that you need to make to the classes. But yeah, in the database, we have that. So I want to just 
go ahead and show you as well on the storage sites how we're going to do that. We can do folders, subfolders, but we're just going to be uh, be quick about it and take the pictures that we added to our um, that we added to our um, how do you say that? Yeah, to our um, app, to our asset folder earlier on. Here I have six, and I'm just gonna. Well, you can't drag and drop them here, can you? So I'm gonna have to upload file here, and I'm gonna go design, and then I mean that's the stuff I have, and take the and take all of them, and one, two, three, four, five, six, and they are here uploaded. So now I can just copy the link of the address, okay? And within my database, under the picture, here I'm gonna paste the URL, which will we will access within the app, okay? So I'm gonna create, I think, two more uh, pizzas right here, uh, off camera right now, and then we are gonna put them within our app, okay? Let's do that. All right, so <clears throat> we have three pizza created. I'm not gonna create more, that's just taking too much time of me. But uh, yeah, you see all of the there, we have three documents, so you can create those by hand as well. And, uh, or create a little uh, website or a little app where you can enter those uh, information as well. Uh, but for now, that's what we're gonna base ourselves on. Uh, in order to display those things within within uh, our app. So uh, let's get back uh, within the app itself. And here now we need to uh, create some methods in order to uh, to access those things. So they are gonna be within the pizza repository. So we need to say first in the, let's close everything. Uh, within the uh, pizza repository dart we're gonna say library and this is gonna be uh, pizza underscore repository all right and here we're gonna export and source slash entities entities dot dart export source slash models models dot dart export source slash firebase pizza repo and export source slash pizza repo okay same as the user repository now under source uh, we're going to create the pizza repo so it's going to be abstract uh, pizza repo as abstract class sorry pizza repo okay and within here we're going to create all of our different methods and here we're gonna say class Firebase Pizza Repo, extend or uh, implement uh, Pizza Repo. Okay, just like that. And we can save that thing. Okay, so here on the same stuff that we had here, our user collection, in our Firebase Pizza Repo, we're gonna create uh, not a user uh, collection, but a pizza collection, okay? And we're gonna need to import uh, Firestore, uh, but first it's gonna call, be called pizza. So now we need to import Cloud Firestore within it. So inside our prospect.yaml file inside the pizza repository, we can just uncomment Cloud, Fire, uh, Cloud Firestore. Save that, go back to pizza repository and import that package, save it. So for now, we need we need a few methods. So we only need a getting methods, okay? So we're just first gonna create it here and we're gonna add it to the pizza repo that dart later on, but it's gonna be a future, okay? A future that's gonna give us a list of pizza, okay? Uh, we're gonna call it get, get pizza, get pizza, and that's gonna be asynchronous, okay? Uh, gonna do a try catch on it and if there is a problem I'm gonna log the problem so I can see it in the console and uh, okay import developer and rethrow the exception so the block can catch it uh, what do we want to do here we want to say return await pizza collection oh my god okay pizza collection dot docs doc well, pizza collection dot get uh, dot then 
Okay, so now we have a list here. We have a query snapshot. Okay, so we are requesting the entire pizza collection. Okay, so now what we want to do with the value, we want to say, well, value dot docs uh, pizza collection. Yeah, pizza collections dot get then. value.docs.map, okay? And here, what do we want to map? Well, we want to map um, uh, pizza, no, sorry, pizza.from entity, pizza entity dot from document, and that's gonna be e.data, okay? And we wanna say uh, that we want a list in the end, so we wanna say two lists, and that's just, that's just the method right there to get all of the pizzas that are uh, within our um, our pizzas uh, 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 collection in our Firestore. Okay, so now we are gonna try to get that thing here. Okay, so we have a list that's actually dynamic. So we should have three items right there, right? So before we do that, we need to actually get the method that we just created and add it to the abstract class. Okay need to import models okay and save that so now we need to create a block so we need to collapse everything navigate to the lib folder now screens home blocks here we're going to create a new block that we're going to call get pizza okay we have our pizza ic i'm going to call it get pizza block okay so event state and block so the event is going to be a class okay and we're going to call that class get pizza and that's going to extend our sealed class which is get pizza event okay and we don't need any parameters for it now that's fine the state uh, that we have is going to be uh, get pizza so first is going to be sorry get pizza what failure failure, loading, and success. And if the state is success, I need to have a final list of pizza, okay? That we'll call pizzas, okay? And uh, we will add that to get pizza success, Let's say this dot pizzas, okay? And we can actually also implement those things inside those right there. And here you see, it doesn't recognize this pizza because inside our main prospect.yaml file, we need to import exactly as the same as we imported our user repository. We need to import our pizza repository. So it's gonna do that right now. And if I go back here, I can normally now import the uh, pizza class and it's gonna recognize it. That's exactly how it works now. Okay, perfect. So now inside our block here, we want to implement our get pizza. Okay. But first we need to have um, a, a pizza, a, yeah, a, a pizza um, repository, pizza repo, pizza repo, I'm gonna make it private. Okay. This dot pizza repo. And uh, what I want to do here is put the async keyword, okay? And do a try catch as we've done already a, a, a million times. Emit if there is a problem within the catch. Um, emit what? Uh, get pizza failure. Before the try, I'm going to emit get pizza loading, all right? And within the try, I'm going to emit if everything goes right get pizza success but here you see it requires a list of pizzas so we're going to get them so here list of pizza pizzas is equal to await pizza repo dot get pizza and that's it for our uh oh, left that thing final that's it for our uh, get pizza block. It's done, okay? So now we are going to pass it to our UI in order for our UI to respond to it, okay? So um, within our, here our app view, 
we previously provided a block provider with the sign-in block, but we actually need a multi-block provider, okay? So we are going to change that, multi-block provider, okay? And the second block provider is get pizza block, okay? So the get pizza block needs a, a Firebase pizza repo, okay? We don't have any objects for that yet, so we can create one. But what we want to do straight up here is pass um, um yeah add uh, an event to the block provider okay and you need to make it double dotted and they say get pizza okay so we can have the response and use a block builder within our home screen straight after okay because it's the parent and you you do you trigger the event always in the parent all right so now i what i can do is go inside the home screen right here and inside our body here I can wrap my grid view, okay? I, I would I would say, yeah, I can grab my, let's make it simple. I can wrap my grid view with the block builder, okay? Get pizza block, okay? And of type get pizza block, get pizza state. And here I can say within the builder, if the state is get pizza success, okay? I can return my grid view, okay? So I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom of my, of my grid view up and say that right okay good but if the state is different i can say else if state is get pizza loading i'm gonna return center child circular progress indicator meaning that uh, the data is loading right and i can say else if it's failure or something and return center child a text that will say an error has occurred just something like this and you could add a button to say uh, retry or something like that but we're just not going to do that so for now an error has occurred okay so that's because something somewhere is not going right okay but that's fine here we can say we, we need to say that that our inside our grid or grid view, the item count is equal to state dot pizzas dot length. Okay. So now let's see what's going on. We have a problem somewhere. The int is not a subtype of double. Okay. So now we know that uh, inside our packages, pizza repository, lib source models and entities, we have some problems because I've put some doubles. So here now I'm going to put some integers instead of our doubles. So that's for the pizza. The macros is fine. And the pizza entity here, I'm going to replace the double with an integer and the double with an integer. And I'm going to reload everything. And that's pretty cool. We see that we have three, um, that we have three, uh, three cards. And so now we are going to make our grid view dynamic. All right. So the, the picture, first first things first, the picture. So here we are utilizing an image.asset, okay? Now we're going to make image.network, okay? And we're going to call state.pizzas, access the, the integer, so the, the index of the one that we are in, and access the picture parameter. And if I save that, you see that we have three different pictures now. So that's pretty cool. So I'm going to copy that and save it for later on. So here, under that, we are non-veggie, or veggie, okay? So here, inside the text widget, we can say, we can access the is veggie parameter, which is a Boolean. And if that is true, then we can say veggie. And if that is not true, we can say non-veggie just like this, okay? And here, I'm just gonna say veggie. All right, and I don't need that to be constant because it's not anymore. And if I save that, see veggie, non-veggie, non-veggie. But what I can do as well is take that thing and apply it to the color, all right? Because we have our box decoration right here, right? And what I want to do, for example, for the color here is say, if the state.pizza is veggie, then I want it to be green. Otherwise, I want it to be red, okay? Okay, just like that. And if I save that, veggie, non-veggie, non-veggie. All right, cool. That's starting to look like something. Um, let's continue. 
So the the uh, the spicy stuff. So now we have the spicy stuff. So the text is only the thing that's changing. So uh, it's either going to be for the text. Uh, let me take the design out. So it's either either going to be um, blend, spicy, or balance. Okay. So now we're going to do the same thing. If uh, states dot pizza e so the index dot spicy is equal to one. So that's how I build it. It's either one, two, or three. So if it's equal to one, then we are going to say something. Else, if state dot pizza dot spicy is equal to two, then we're going to say something else. Else, it's it's going to be three anyway. So we're going to say something different as well. So we say if it's one, it's blend. If it's two, it's balanced. If it's three, it's spicy. Okay, good. Uh, what's happening? Yes, constant goes away. Up, save that. Spicy, blend, and balance. Perfect, right? And we can do the same as well for the colors. Uh, we can say uh, that this thing is going to be up. We can retake our uh, statement right there for the colors and say that uh, up. Uh, if it's equal to one, then we have colors dot green. Okay. If it's equal to two, we have perhaps an orange and if it's equal to three we have a red accent or something like this yeah see spicy blend and balance all right that's pretty cool and we can have the same thing for the uh, the green opacity right there but you get the point i think how it works um so now the next thing we have is the name so same stuff state dot pizza we access the index and here we get the name so we need to make that not constant anymore the beast cheesy marvel and the classic perfect uh next up is the description so instead of having this we can remove that and say description right there save that and you see that the description changed perhaps you want that a little bit bigger so you can see more I would understand. Uh, so the description. Now the last thing that we have is the price. All right. So uh, here um, I've escaped dollars. I don't know why it went away. But basically what we have right there would be the price. Right. So here we would say uh, something like states dot pizza e dot price. All right. So we have the price of the pizzas right there. But here under that, we'll have the discount. OK, so actually the price, since I've made it a discount or percentage. So we have a pizza that is like 10 euros. OK. But minus 10 percent, which would be the actual displayed price in blue. OK, so the price is here, actually. So here we have our price. OK. We can just take that and put it right there because that's the real price of the thing. Okay, so that would be twelve dollars, fourteen dollars, and ten dollars. But we are uh, saving ten percent. We are saving our discount from it. We we don't put it anywhere here, but we actually could, uh, like add an icon minus ten percent, something like this. But here, uh, so we have ten euros minus minus ten percent, uh, and so we're just going to implement that as well so here um, so we're just going to say that is our discount divided by 100 so I think that should work right so we have our price times state dot discount divided by 100 Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, 
uh, let me check that up. Let me check that up. All right, sorry. So exactly that. So we have our state.pizza.price minus state.price times the discount divided uh, by 100. So that will give us $9 for the classic, 12.6 for the beast and 10.8 for the Marvel, right? So now uh, we are uh, fully dynamic on the screen. So well done, that's pretty cool. And that was the end of it for that. Uh, so now the next step is to make the, um, the detail uh, dynamic. So the detail screen, so we can close that, that, app view as well, this as well, this as well. And we can open the detail screens.dart here. And what we're going to do simply here is just say, because we already gathered the information, we're just going to add here a final parameter that's called pizza. Okay. We need to import the repository in question and add this to the constructor. And here inside our home screen, we are going to need to, when we click on the material app, wherever that thing is here, uh, to add the uh, state dot pizza and the index itself and remove the constant to give the pizza to our detail screen. And here we can as well then uh, utilize the network dot image right there. So instead of asset image network image. Okay. And here we're going to say widget dot. Uh, we don't need to say widget. It's, the, it's a stateless widget. So we can just say pizza dot picture. Remove the constant. That's going to be the right picture. Um, we can just say for the name, which is somewhere here, up pizza dot name, remove the constant, add some more constant for the price. It's the same stuff. So here we'll have the pr pizza dot price or two string. It's another way to do it. I prefer I prefer the uh, the way that the way that we did here actually, so we're just gonna take that up right there up to the price tick, remove the state just say pizza. Dot price, invalid constant value, you got it, okay. And for the actual price, we're gonna take exactly what we just done on the home screen and put it there, but removing uh, state.pizza. Okay, removing state.pizzas and the I, right? Save that up, all right, 10.8, makes some sense, okay, good. Uh, and the last thing that we can do here is access those values. So here we can say pizza dot macros, right? Dot calories. Remove the constant value right there uh, and uh, do the same thing for uh, the protein right here. Proteins for the fat and for the carbs. All right, add some constant value and you'd see that the values changes if I've done my stuff right. Taking a picture, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> uh, all right, so we have that, the beast. Yes, uh, 312 calories, 260. Yeah, everything is working dynamically now and that's amazing. Okay, so everything works fine. So the last thing that we could eventually do is the card system, but we are three hours and 30 minutes deep inside this video, this tutorial already, and that's not really important. So if you want to see uh, perhaps a part two of this video where we create the card system as well as perhaps a Flutter web app to add new pizza dynamically on a website cre created with Flutter linked to uh, Firebase, we can do that. But for now, I think it's pretty straightforward. If we uh, if we look a bit at all the work that we did, we've created an authentication and uh, system. So with sign in and sign up, 
so we can authenticate ourselves straight up within the app. We are redirected to the home page of the app where we have displayed dynamically several items from uh, Firebase, which are here, okay? And we can click on those items, have the details and even more information from those things and, uh, and log out if we want. So that's pretty cool. I hope guys that you um, that you've enjoyed the video. It's been quite uh, the longest video I've done on my channel, really. So it's a uh, it's a big deal for me. I think I will slice that video up in several parties in order in several parts in order for uh, for it to be more understandable. But I will drop uh, a full three hours and thirty minute long video there, so you can go back see it. I will link the code within the uh, first comment of the um, of the video. And uh, as well, don't don't forget, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it looks like uh, feels like uh, a decade ago uh, to join the school community. Uh, I will put the link as well. Uh, first link in the description is free. And um, and yeah, I'll see you there and uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, bye bye. Bye bye, guys.